Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever we are. It's a great day. And I would like to inform everybody that we are already live on the official Facebook page of the International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated. We are also live on YouTube. Right time check, it's 12.22 and a few minutes. We are going to start our event. So while we are waiting, I know there is a registration link to be provided by the organizers. So don't forget to click on the link. And I think that would also be posted in the official Facebook page. All right, once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. And we are live on Facebook to our Zoom participants here and to our Facebook live audiences because we are, I know, scattered all over around the world. Have a great day and I know and I'm very sure that you are going to enjoy and learn today's event. All right, so that I've checked, it's 12.23. In seven minutes, we are about to begin. So settle yourself and enjoy the rest of the day. All right, once again, time check, it's 12.25, and I would like to remind everybody that we are live on Facebook, yes, live on the official Facebook page of the International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated. Yes, yes, yes. And don't forget our registration link. I know it's already posted in our official Facebook page and, of course, in our Zoom chat box. All right. Again, wherever you are around the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome. Welcome, welcome, and I know you will be enjoying and learning today's event. All right. Once again, relax, and I know you are ready for today. Again, time check. It's 12.26. Yes, the registration link is already here in our chat box. Don't forget to fill out. And of course, I know it will also be posted to our official Facebook page to those watching via Facebook and via YouTube, kindly visit the official Facebook page of the International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated and get the attendance link, all right? Just relax in a few minutes. We are going to begin.
Eh, hindi ako marunong. All right, in two minutes, we are about to begin the program. Please stay muted. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Always. Always stay muted, you know, as we are live. Yes, we are live on the official Facebook page of the International Association of Physical Education, Sports Incorporated. And you can also visit the official Facebook page of the Teacher Education Student Council of the Batanga State University, JPLTC Malvar. And of course, I would like to acknowledge our guests for today they are already present but i know they will be properly introduced later yes salute to all the people who are already here in the zoom meeting room and of course to our facebook live audience hello good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are stay safe enjoy keep learning all right in a minute we are going to start the program Right, may I also remind you that the official registration link is already here in our Zoom chat box. Don't forget to visit the chat box, click and fill out the form. And of course, it is also posted on the official Facebook page of the IAPS and the Teacher Education Student Council Facebook page. All right, get ready. All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I know you are get you are ready for today. All right. International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated in collaboration with Physical Education Foundation of India. Swarnim Gujarat Sports University and Batanga State University, JPLTC Malvar College of Teacher Education welcome you to the International Conference on Sports Psychology happening today, April 17, 2022, live on the official Facebook page of the International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated and the Teacher Education Student Council. And to formally begin our event, let us welcome the Levistus Corral of Batanga State University, JPLPC Malvar, for the prayer.
Ladies and gentlemen, the singing of the national anthems, the Indian national anthem in audiovisual presentation to be followed by the Thailand national anthem in audiovisual presentation and the Philippine national anthem to be performed by the Levistas Choral of Batanga State University, JPLCC Malvo. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Utkala Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Utchala Jaladhita Ranga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Aashish Maage Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Jana Gana Mangala Daayak Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He ธงชาติและเพลงชาติไทยเป็นสัญ,ญลักษณ์ของความเป็นไทยเราจงร่วมใจยืนตรงเคารพธงชาติด้วยความภาคภูมิใจในเอกราชและความเสียสละของบรรพบุรุษไทยเอกราชจะไม่ให้ใครคนเดียวสุดาม
Ladies and gentlemen, the International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated, in collaboration with Physical Education Foundation of India, Swarnim Gujarat Sports University, and Batanga State University, JPLPC Malvar College of Teacher Education welcome you to the International Conference on Sports Psychology, happening today, April 17, 2022, live via Facebook page of the International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated, and of course, happening here via Zoom. And of course, before we begin our session, we would like to you to listen and watch the conference etiquette. Once again, let us observe the conference etiquette for the smooth flow of our program. I would like to introduce myself. I am your host for today, Dr. Glenn Cortesano. I am a guest lecturer of Batanga State University, JPLPC Malvar College of Teacher Education. And now it is my deep honor and privilege to introduce to you for the very first time in my life, right? the Batanga State University President for his inaugural speech. Let us give a warm welcome and a virtual applause to the University President of Batanga State University, Dr. Tirso A. Ronquillo. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Batanga State University is pleased to co-host this international conference on sports technology or psychology. Our uh, partnership with International Association of Physical Education and Sports, Physical Education Foundation of India, Swarnim Guharat Sports University is uh, really uh, overwhelming on the part of Batanga State University specifically for Batanga State University, JPLPC Malbar College of Teacher Education. 
I would like, of course, to greet our partners, the uh, President of International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated, Professor Dr. Jesus Argarin, the uh, Chairman of uh, IAPES, Associate Professor Sri Jevelson Santos, and of course, the uh, Vice President of the Association of IAPES, our very own Dr. CJ Panganiban, the uh, National Secretary of Physical Education Foundation of India, Dr. Fios Hain, the Vice Chancellor of Bagoharat Sports University, uh, Professor Dr. Arjun Singh Rana, the uh, Professor Department of Physical Education, Chinese Culture University, Professor Dr. Prang Jing Horn Lu, the uh, keynote speaker for this afternoon's uh, conference, Associate Professor of Center for the Sports and Exercise Science, University of Malaysia, uh, Malaya, Malaysia, Associate Professor Dr. Lim Bun Hu, and uh, our uh, resource person, the uh, sports officer, Department of Physical Education and Sports, Malaya, or Malavia National Institute of Technology, Japur, India, Dr. Subir Debnat. The uh, other lecturers or discussion resource person, the uh, India Grand Institute of Physical Education and Sports Sciences, University of Delhi, Professor Dr. Leigh Sherma. The uh, Chartered Counseling Psychologist, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, Ms. Sarah Phillips, the uh, Assistant Secretary of International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated, Dr. Gina Togade Astillero, the Chief Advisor of International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated, Associate Professor Dr. Kishore Mokopadai, and uh, of course, to our very own Chancellor of Batanga State University, JPLP Simalbar Campus, Chancellor Dr. Philip De Lusario, and uh, of course, the uh, Dean of the uh, College of Teacher Education of the campus, who serve as the uh, host for this partnership, Dr. Norabi Marasigan, to all our partners, universities, associations, our very own faculty members and lecturers, our partner lecturers and uh, faculty members of different universities attending this conference, and to all our students who are watching live on YouTube and on other media, to all of us, it is our pleasure to welcome you to this International Conference on Sports Psychology at Batanga State University virtually. Or should I say Happy Easter, everyone, at Batanga State or in the Philippines? We are now uh, celebrating the uh, Easter Sunday. So for those who are Christians, uh, Happy Easter to all of you. Batanga State University is really pleased to be in partnership with you, our partners from India, and of course, this uh, International Association of Physical Education and Sports. I know this uh, partnership started uh, years ago, and I'm happy to see and to know that this partnership continues. I hope that this partnership will augur well to more programs that will synergize the human resource of countries participating in this uh, partnership. This uh, international conference on sports psychology is very important for us to know, specifically for our lecturers on physical education, which will ultimately benefit our students. As we fundamentally believe that a sound mind, a sound body, will be a basic component of a sound individual, a healthy individual. A healthy individual will form a healthy family. A healthy family will form a healthy society. 
a healthy society will form a healthy country. And a healthy country will form a healthy world. I hope that the fitness programs on fitness, on sports psychology, will really bring to us benefits as individuals, as community, as country, as association of nations. Fellowship among nations. This is now very important as we now traverse uh, this era where the world is very VUCA, very volatile, very uncertain, very complex, very ambiguous. Associations, partnerships, friendships among nations is really very critical. This is, I know, beyond sports psychology. These partnerships, this conference today is beyond sports psychology. More than that is our friendships, our camaraderie. Though we're holding this online, I hope that in the near future, in the years to come, soon we will be holding this physically so that we can feel the warmth of each and every member. We can feel the joy. We can feel the, the uh, eagerness. We can see its other smiles. That's our desire. So that really we can strengthen the bond of partnership among us, community of scholars, community of nations, which is very critical in shaping a very peaceful world, a very progressive world, a very dynamic world. I, of course, commend and thank the Batanga State University, JPLPC Malbar College of Teacher Education for being able to host and facilitate this conference as we co-host this with our partners from India and other parts of the globe. I know there are other members from other uh, countries and uh, I know that this is uh, being done per assignment. It's just so happened that this, this time around, it's Batanga State University's assignment. And I hope, and I'm very certain that with the array of the source person which were invited to speak and share their expertise, this will be a successful conference. I would like to thank our resource person for making it for this conference, despite a Sunday. I know for some, this is a family day, but you really spend your time for us to really see each other, to really learn from each other and apply to our respective institutions, the learning that we will be taking out of this conference. So once again, I would like to thank all of you. I would like to thank the organizers. And I would like, of course, to send our heartfelt appreciation and uh, cheerfulness to all our partner institution, the IAPES and our partner organization, the universities in India, to all of you, our pleasure to have partnered with you. My, I hope that this conference will be beneficial to all participants. God bless us all and mabuhay. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the University President of Batanga State University, Dr. Teresa Ronquillo. Thank you so much, sir, for such inspiring, encouraging words for everyone. And again, welcome to the International Conference on Sports Psychology, happening today, April 17, 2022, live via Facebook page of the International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated, and of course, happening here via Zoom. And to continue, it is as well my honor to introduce and call the Chancellor of Batanga State University, JPLPC Malvar, for his welcome address, Dr. Philip Y. Del Rosario. Thank you, uh, Ma'am Glenn. Uh, uh, to our uh, university president, Dr. Tirso A. Ronquillo, uh, the president of uh, Batanga State University. Okay, we have also here uh, the uh, pro uh, professor, Dr. Jesus D. Agarin. Uh, the president of International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated uh, to uh, Associate Professor Sri Dr. Jewelson M. Santos, 
uh, the chairman of International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated. Of course, we also have, have here uh, Dr. Pius Jain, the National Secretary of Physical Education Foundation of uh, Asia, of India, I mean, sorry. Uh, we have here Professor Dr. Arjun Singh Rana, the Vice Chancellor, uh, Swamim Gujarat Sports University. Uh, Professor Dr. Frank Jing Horn, Lu, Professor, Department of Education, Chinese Culture University. And um, we have also here some uh, distinguished personalities. Uh, we have here Associate Professor Dr. Lim Bu Hoi, uh, the Associate Professor, uh, Center for Sports and Exercise Sciences, University of Malaya, Malaysia. Uh, to our uh, very own uh, Dr. TJ Panganiban, the Vice President for International Association of Physical and Sports Incorporated. Of course, uh, Dr. Nora uh, V. Marasigan, the Dean of the College of Industrial of uh, Teacher Education of Matanga State U Malvar Campus, uh, and uh, other personalities and uh, guests. Uh, uh, to be uh, properly uh, introduced later. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, I extend my warmest welcome to all the participants of today's activity, the International Conference on Sports Psychology. Uh, thank you, the International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated uh, in collaboration with Physical Education Foundation of uh, India Swarnim so Gujarat Sports University for your partnership with our own, own university, the Batanga State University. Uh, our partnership is a realization in adapting to a diverse cultures. So let's uh, revive the concept of think global, act global. Uh, today's conference uh, will focus on uh, sports psychology. Sports psychology is very crucial in helping athletes overcome mental roadblocks and improve their uh, performance uh, with many issues of mental health, violence and activism in sports on the rise. More teams and athletes are seeking the expertise, which is the sports uh, psychologist. As many say, men mentality uh, tough athletes are highly competitive, committed, self-motivated, uh, and able to uh, cope effectively in a high pressure situation. Uh, with our able and competent distinguished resource uh, speakers today, I hope that uh, we will learn a lot from today's uh, activity. We are hoping to see more collaborations like this with our partner university and institution. Thank you again and welcome. Good day. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the Chancellor of Batanga State University, JPLTC Malvar, Dr. Philip Y. Del Rosario. Thank you so much, sir, for gracing our event. And now to give us his message, a dear friend of mine, a fellow Kababayan, of course, the Associate Professor, Sri Dr. Jewelson M. Santos, the chairman of the International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated. Let us welcome him with a virtual applause. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the International Conference on Sports Psychology. Mental game coaching is one of the segments of sports psychology that concentrates specifically on helping athletes break through the mental barriers that are keeping them from performing up to their peak potential. By focusing on the mental skills needed to be successful in any sporting competition, mental game coaching seeks to achieve the overall goal of performance improvement, which 
Sports psychology is about improving your attitude and mental game skills to help you perform your best in identifying limited beliefs and embracing a healthier philosophy about sports. There are a lot of benefits of sports psychology for the athletes. First, it's, it does improve focus and deal with distraction. Many athletes have the ability to concentrate, but often their focus is displaced on the wrong areas, such as when a batter thinks I need to get a hit or um, I need to shoot the ball, okay? Second is grow confidence in the athletes who have doubts. Doubts is the opposite of confidence that also may create distractions. So if you maintain many doubts prior to or during your performance, this indicates low self-confidence or at least you are sabotaging what confidence you had at the start of the competition competition or com in, the, in the competition confidence is what i call a core mental game skill because of its importance in relationship to other mental skills it also developed okay, coping skills to deal with setbacks and errors, such as emotional control is a prerequisite to getting into the zone, which athletes with very high and strict expectation have troubles dealing with minor errors that are a natural part of sports. Then it also finds the right zone of intensity for your sports. Okay, intensity in a broad sense to identify the level of arousal or mental activation that is necessary for each person to perform his or her best. Sports psychology also helps teams develop communication skills and cohesion. A major part of the sports psychology and mental training is helping teams improve cohesion and communication that are very crucial into a sport or a team to instill a healthy belief system and identify rational thoughts one of the areas that may or may or may be okay um affect most of the time are our pride okay so we also need to get rid of these things then it also improves in balance motivation for off the pole performance because it is important to look at your level of motivation and why you are motivated to play your specific sports. Then develop confidence injury, okay, post injury. Some athletes find themselves fully prepared physically to get back into competition and practice, but mentally some uh, scars remain. And to develop game specific strategies and game plans, which all great coaches employ game plans raise strategies and course management skills to help athletes mentally prepare for competition and lastly to identify and enter the zone more often which this incorporates everything that a person an individual a coach or an athlete may do on a specific sports so sports psychology may not be appropriate for every athlete due to their uniqueness but not every person who plays a sports wants to improve performance. So sports psychology is probably for a right people, but all are required to undergo sports psychology and mental game training and conditioning. With this, I would like to take this opportunity to thank um, our partners, the Swarnim Gurat uh, Sports University, the Physical Education Foundation of India, uh, Batanga State um, University, headed by the University President Dr. Tirso, and uh, the Batanga State University, JPLPC, uh, Malbar Campus, headed by the chan uh, uh, their um, um, Chancellor, and um, to uh, the uh, Dean of the College of Teacher Education in Batanga State University, uh, Dr. Nara Marasigan. Thank you so much for um, giving us this opportunity. Okay, uh, that uh, IAPS is a partner with you once again. With that, thank you so much and have a great day. Hope that you will learn a lot from this conference. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Jewelson.
the chairman of the International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated. And to our Facebook audience and to those people here inside the Zoom meeting room, once again, the International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated in collaboration with Physical Education Foundation of India, Swarnim Gujarat Sports University and Batanga State University, JPLTC Malvar College of Teacher Education welcome you to the International Conference on Sports Psychology. And now to introduce our first resource speaker, Ladies and gentlemen, may I call the Dean of the College of Teacher Education of Batanga State University, JPLPC Malvar, Dr. Nora V. Marasigan. Good day, everyone. It is both an honor and a privilege to introduce to you our keynote speaker in today's international conference on sports psychology. He is an associate professor, Center for Sports and Exercise Sciences from the University of Malaya, Malaysia. To give his keynote address, please welcome associate professor, Dr. Liam Boon Hoon. Uh, thank, thank you, Dr. Nora, for the kind introduction. Can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, Doc, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. So I just, um, first of all, I would like to say thank you uh, very much to International uh, Association of PGK Education and Sport Incorporated, uh, especially to uh, Dr. Javasan uh, and also Krishna uh, for the invitation. And... Um, I'm so proud. <laughs> I'm so proud because this conference is, uh, you know, combination of uh, Philippines, India, and Thailand, and uh, it's wonderful. And moreover, moreover, I I want to stress on is very important. And this conference is actually international conference on sports psychology. Is is seldom happen when you talk about uh, you know sports science area and all that. But uh, this is the first time that. I can see that people is taking seriously about sports psychology. So I'm so proud, like, uh, you know, people are, you know, making an important of sports psychology as a, and also another thing that I observe is actually when the, you know, welcome address and all that, I'm, I'm so impressed the organizer is able to get, you know, you know, the chancellor of the university and vice chancellor of the university to attend, to welcome address. I think this is fantastic. I think not, not all the organizers are able to do that. And uh, congratulations again to, uh, to the organizers and well done, lah, I can say that. Yeah, okay, now I start to uh, straight away present my, uh, yeah, my presentation for today. And then hopefully, um, yeah, if, if anything goes wrong with the, hopefully is everything is okay here. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, can you see the slide moving? Yes, doctor. Is it bit, it's a bit all right now. Working, eh? Working, eh? <laughs> all right. All right. Um, we're going to start with, I think, uh, all these, um, you know, speakers and an international conference on sports psychology. This is what, uh, well, at first I thought that Professor Frank Lu is here, so, but uh, he, he was not there. Uh, maybe he's talking later or something like that. So I will be the first person we are talking about. So my topic is actually very, you know, uh, just now the chancellor already mentioned about, you know, I was, I was listening carefully and then the chancellor talking about um, happy people. It should be consist of happy body and induce a happy mind. I think this is what I'm going to do. So, you know, my topic is actually sport massage sport fostering a positive psychophysiological responses. So that, uh, you know, in relation to this uh, topic of this uh, conference, it's talking about sport psychology, but because we can't 100% to see the sport psychology changes or responses, unless 
we use a physiological measures to identify that. So that, that's why I include the uh, psychophysiological. So this, this is all my contact and all that. And my photo, this is my university and all that. All right. So that uh, um, when I prepare this presentation, it's actually based on this. I'm actually currently doing a lot of these uh, introductions in terms of the sport massage essential for the fitness professional. Um, you know, before that, I was doing a lot of, of coaches and all that. And then, um, you know, I, I venture, I realized that, that there's another bigger chunk of people is actually in the fitness industry. That's why I'm working with the Fitness uh, Malaysia or, or uh, FEA in Asia so that uh, actually I introduce them, uh, you know, uh, you know, just a two days course and all that. So this is what I'm doing now. Eh? And um, the background of this uh, 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 presentation is actually um, I'm a certified mature at the same time because I'm working at University of Malaya. I attended so many uh, sports. I went to Thailand to get the certificate as well. And also I was appointed that, you know, as a national uh, coaches education in Malaysia as a trainer for basic sports massage course and all that. And also I'm a panel for the module basic massage. I'm the one actually uh, prepared this module for the coaches and all that. And also the experience with more than 10 years with all that. And then I publish you know, the basic uh, sport massage book. That's what to share, I think. So they wrote a module, a sport massage essential for fitness professional for this uh, fitness edu trainer, uh, if we call it FEA. Lah, yeah? So that... Uh, this is the book that I'm talking about. So the background of the presentation is actually uh, a lot of things is actually based on this, uh, you know, basic sport massage. So that uh, hopefully anyone uh, interested in all that. I really hope that just now the chancellor in the welcome speech also mentioned about that. I, I really, because the, the border now is the, in Malaysia is really open. So that uh, hopefully one day I'll be, you know, go to Philippines to introduce the basic sport massage for all the coaches, for all the people who are interested and all that. So that I think that'll be good. Yeah. So that I think sport massage is uh, everybody love it. Yeah. <laughs> so the outline for my presentation, I'm going to explain a little bit of sport massage. And then after that, attack of sport massage. And then after that, the effect of sport massage. And then the most important thing, actually, my focus is actually on the psychophysiological responses of the sport massage. So that because the, when the organizer tell me that uh, your time is only given 25 minutes, so I'm a little bit uh, rushing. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, you can see that. Uh, Dr. Lim, the, there is no sound. If if you're trying to play a video with a sound, there's no sound actually. Say again? Uh, there's no sound in your video presentation. No no audio? Yeah, no audio. Ah, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> now my only two videos, don't worry about all that, just uh, assuming. <laughs> but not much of talking, it's, it's more uh, action, uh, don't worry about all that. Eh? All right, um, so what, what is sport massage? A lot of people are talking about sport massage have been used uh, for rehab, uh, rehabilitation and relaxation for thousand years around the world. I think everybody knows that. And then sport massage have been treatments. Uh, they administrated for the approximately 45% of the total time in the physiotherapy treatment. Even uh, physiotherapy, the rehab person, that when they do a rehab session or so physiotherapy session, actually they, they accounted that it's actually about 45%. They are doing actually more on sport massage. Yeah, And also that when you talk about that, Sport massage is use general approaches such as preparation for competition between competition and also assisting recovery from competition rather than treatment for specific problem and all that. So that uh, sport massage have been using, you know, uh, before, uh, during, and even after competition and all that. I think for treatment is more on uh, uh, we, we we give it to the physiotherapy or maybe we call call it the rehab. 
person that are going to do that. Yeah, so that the sport massage is more on, uh, we call it as a maintainer. Yeah. So the last proportion of the sport massage application in sports is when it's due to many coaches and athletes hold the belief. So that based on the observation, the experiences, that the massage uh, can be provide several, several benefits of the body, such as increase the blood flow. So that when you do massage, it's actually helping the blood flow and also reduce the muscle tensions, uh, neurological excitability, and also increase the sense of well-being, all that. I think all the previous research have been done a lot in terms of sport research, uh, massage and all that. Yeah, hopefully. And then... When you talk about massage, I've been identified is actually mechanical manipulation of the body tissue and rhythmical pressures and stroke uh, with the purpose of promoting health and well-being. So that you know that sport massage you cannot be stagnant; it should be move mobile, moving, you know, dynamically. Yeah. So it still go back to the mechanical. So the classic Western massage is uh, we when I learn all this is actually um uh, you know based on the Swedish massage lah. So it is the most common uh, form of massage that currently used around the world, and then for athlete and even the purpose of clinical advantage and all it is actually based on the Swedish. So each of the country, let's say example, you go to China, there's a Chinese uh, massage. Then you go to uh, Indonesia, they got Indian uh, India massage, uh, Indonesia massage, and then you go to India, there's India massage. Every every country they create their own. In Thailand, it's actually. Tons of massage, you can talk about that, yeah? So you can see that, yeah. So this, this is what I did uh, during the course and all that. So the two days course is actually uh, created for this, uh, you know, fitness profession. So they are actually a trainer in the fitness industry. So mostly some of them are manager, you know, so that uh, you can see that. Uh, so what are the sport massage techniques that they have been applied in terms of, let's say, example in Swedish, you know, what are they doing? So what they do is actually they use the name of effort, uh, petrisha, frictions and uh, tournaments and all that, that they have been using and all that um, in terms of, you know, sport massage. So I also the same that uh, we are going to use the same. It, uh, so what happened? when we have these four different stroke and all that. So what are the effects is actually, uh, most of the study have been conducted is actually on the biomechanical effect. That means you talk about the effect of the you know, tissues and all that muscles and all that range of motion, passive stiffness and also active stiffness. And also uh, a lot of study have been doing on the physiological effect. I mean, the changes in terms of tissue and organs in terms of, let's say, example, the muscle blood flow, the skin, uh, blood uh, circulation, uh, parasympathetic uh, activity, relaxation hormone and stress hormones and all that is more due to the uh, physiological effect. And also the another part is actually uh, when people are doing a study and then all that in, on the effect of uh, sport massage is actually on the neurological effect. So the reflex stimuli stimulation so the neuromuscular uh, excitability reduce pain muscle tensions and or spam and all that so it's still under that category and also of course uh, today's talk um, um actually because this sport this sport psychology the conference is related to sport psychology that's why i'm focusing on the psychological effect the effect of the increased relationship between the body and mind which is what just now, and the keynote, uh, what I got an address and all that, uh, maybe the welcome address, uh, even the, the guest of honor have been mentioned about that body and mind. Uh, this is what I'm focusing on. And of course, you, you always talk about relaxation. You always talk about reduce the anxiety. So these are the, the key word that I'm going to focus on so that the circle is actually bigger. Yeah? <laughs> so that uh, when you talk about that uh, psychophysiological responses, uh, various mechanisms are the cause of the relaxation has res resulting from the massage have been proposed. I mean, why people go to massage, sport massage, and then they feel relaxed? Why? You know, so these are the includes of, of number one is actually when you go for sport massage, actually they increase the plasma endorphin. So the endorphin is actually the good hormone. The hormone is actually secreted so that you feel relaxed. Right, and also decrease the arousal level means like when you go for uh, I don't think so that 
when people relax, the arousal level it should be going down. So that is actually opposite. Yeah? And also decrease the stress hormones as well. So the stress hormone or the cortisol level and all that is actually reduced as well after the uh, uh, sport massage session. So act activation of parasympathetic responses also that uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic, but this is more on parasympathetic so that the control is actually uh, going down as well. So all this is actually due to sport massage and then people feel more relaxed. Yeah. So other than that, you can see that the most evidence of the field competition is the in sport is that many study have been examining the psychophysiology effect of the sport competition means like what happened when before competition. So that, for example, a study shows that the marathon running uh, competition increased the cortisol level. Definitely, when you run for 42 kilometers, a uh, cortisol level will be there. Uh, more than the non-competitive event and comparative with the uh, physical uh, strain and all that, I think for sure. So that if the person running the marathon, if they go after the running event, they go for the sport massage, I'll assure that they will feel more relaxed, definitely. Yeah. So another study examining the competition of dancers who shows that a higher level of cortisol on the competition day compared to a training day. So that uh, this study also shows that when uh, dancers go for competition, what happens is like they feel that stressful anxiety comes up, and then the cortisol level is cortisol means like bad You know. So that what happened is actually if you go for the sport massage. So when it's more than cortisol responses to the competition was much larger than the response of um, uh, importance in the laboratory stretches and all that, definitely. So that, you know, real situation, let's say most of the athlete when before the competition and all that, definitely the cortisol level going up. Eh? Stress level is high, anxiety level is high. That's why, why not use the sport massage? Yeah. And um, other than that, uh, sport massage have been categorized as a touch massage. Because when I do that, I need to touch a patient. So that it's not, regardless, of, let's say, example, you compare to those, uh, now they are in a lot of uh, technology have been advancement, and people using the uh, machine, you know, massage chair and all that. I, I don't know whether, how many of you actually, you prefer human touch compared to machine touch. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you can do a study on that and you realize that. So touch or touch massage report enhanced positive feeling, uh, such as well-being, pleasures, comfort, relaxation, and confidence. And then this group of researchers have been done that. That's why they say, why? Instead of using machine, use the human, the human touch. Let's say the mom touch the baby also the same. So the, the, the baby, if you comfort, the, the, the baby, if you well-being, same goes to the adult. Yeah? So again, when you talk about the touch massage also seems to decrease the negative emotions such as anxiety, pain, stress, loneliness, and even meaninglessness, and also reduce experience of the physiological symptoms and all that. So again, and tons of research have been done on that. They say, human they like touching uh, so that touch means like sport massage is actually touch massage right so again so you can see that they, they have been reported so that where is mechanism from the cause of the relaxation response resulting from the massage have been proposed also so these are the includes the you know increase the you know the plasma of endorphin uh, people have been decreased the arousal level we do done that decrease at the stress hormones level also done that and the activations of our parasympathetic uh, uh, responses so people done the, the uh, study on that so that these are the uh, good thing so if, if you focus because today's lecture is more on you know, sport psychology. So that I actually uh, impact a little bit of in terms of anxiety, you know. So the majority of the research in psychological areas of reported massage provide a positive effect on anxiety because most of the athletes, when they want to compete, they feel stressful, they feel anxiety level is high and all that. So I think you cannot... Run. So most studies have been used as state uh, trait anxiety. So they use a questionnaire. I think you know that to measure the anxiety and all that. So what happened? 
study of the effect of massage on the anxiety, however, have several limitations such as uh, no control group and, and inappropriate control group and all that, a small sample size and all that, but regardless of what they do and all that, all the limitation and all that, I can tell you sport massage have been improved. So, for example, the anxiety level have been being massaged and then the day before the academic examination was assessed at the nine mac Medic, uh, medical student as well and then the, the mean of the stars decreased significantly after the massage intervention and respiratory rate was also significantly decreased during pre and post massage measure so regardless of uh, just now we're talking about uh, before competition even the exam people and all that they done that so that why not Again, sport massage, you talk about the reducing the anxiety level. So small sample size that the lack of the control group make the effectiveness of the acute single massage treatments uh, unclear. And then people say because of the sample size and all that, we all got people doing research and all. So the long-term effect of 30 minute massage twice a week for the four consecutive week were examined for 30 dancers today. So that this group of study and all that, they, they found that, oh, why not I, we use the a little bit long term instead of short term? So, you know, touch and go is not sufficient to report what are the effects. So they use that, the long term. So that the progressive muscular uh, therapy group was uh, used for the comparisons and all that. They used a comparative uh, study and then compared to this uh, uh, sport massage group. So both groups uh, reported lower state anxiety level and depressed mood subscale on the profile mood state. And then profile mood state, whoever in the sports psychology, they always use that form or now, uh, you know, some people say brooms and all that so that you can use that uh, to, to check on the state anxiety, even the mood of the athlete. And all that. However, only the massage group reviewed that the significant lower saliva cortisol level after the massage session. Can you imagine that? So these are the things that, you know, um, cortisol level saliva, you cannot cheat. So, you know, it is still related to physiological, right? So the use of physiological to determine the psychological uh, parameters, the responses. Yeah. So other than that, you can see that the study did not uh, state that the time of blood uh, collection, therefore the cortisol level should be interpreted uh, carefully because of the effect of the uh, cardinal rhythms and all that. But uh, this, these are the uh, what uh, people feedback on that. Yeah, and also the progressive relaxation therapy was not an appropriate control group as the, it was active uh, relaxation uh, uh, technique, and it is so uh, this is. A, a report that study they compare the sport massage with the um, you know PMR group and all that relaxation group yeah so that if you know that they are PMR then you know what's going on and all that yeah and also when uh, the relaxation group complete the the exercise at home and then by following the recorded tape and then they raise uh, the issues of complying to the intervention so but of course these are the setback in terms of the study uh, compare uh, sport massage would the PMR group. Yeah? So therefore, a further study is effect of the massage and anxiety need to provide a more appropriate control groups in order so that to, to make sure that is actually everything under control and similar things that can actually, the sport massage is actually induce the uh, relaxation, uh, you know, to reduce the anxiety and order even to improve the mood as well. All right? And of course, when you talk about um, sports psychology you cannot run away from relaxation all right so the effect of muscles on relaxation have been investigated by using valid questionnaires such as the POM as well so the POM is one of the popular in terms of that you know uh you know, now, now there are a lot of people using room yeah and uh, however the use of POMs indicating that the level of relaxation is questionable by the questionnaire is complete the six subscale that if you know that the POM then the tension, depression, anger, vigorous, uh, fatigue, and confusion and all that, that this is subscale. So that uh, when you use that, but now there are a lot of, you can use even the machine to check the relaxation. You can use the physiological to check the uh, relaxation. Therefore, the POM is not the appropriate questionnaire from each uh, measure relaxation uh, according to their report. And then, but the other Wingbert uh, reported the primary study of the effect of the massage on the mood enhanced 
183 physical education students. So that another group of researchers that did on that. So massage intervention will compare with the several physical activities such as swimming, jogging, tennis, and racket ball and hot. So that they use that to check whether the athlete uh, should be more relaxed or not when they go for sport massage. Yeah. And um, the student completed a battery of five physiology questionnaire before and after the intervention, including the palm and the state anxiety inventory, and also the high and general activation tiers uh, uh, adjusted to checklist as well. And uh, what happened is actually, interestingly, only the masses and the running group reported significant positive mood enhancement, while significant decrease in the tension, confusion, fatigue, anxiety, anger and depression, only massage group and running group. So that if you want to use comparatively this, uh, you can actually uh, similar study with them as well. So only the massage group will show the significant decrease in the tears, high activation sub skill and also uh, state anxiety inventory and all that. So that you can imagine that uh, even though the other two questionnaire is only sport massage group able to de -re reduce the sub skill in terms of the tension and then more relaxed, yeah? So other than that, um, another study has been uh, compared the psychological effect on the massage, lying, uh, you know, laying, uh, just resting, and then the touching control using a PMI with the boxing training. And uh, massage application during the training improved the tensions and fatigue and sub skill in the palms, and then which are all the applicable uh, to the measurement of relaxation again, yeah? So I think uh, both uh, Weber uh, 98 and Hemmings also show the significant positive psychological effect of the attribute of, of the massage despite of mood state of the participants. So that again, um, they actually verified that it's actually positive in terms of, you know, people get more relaxed. Like, yeah, is that an anxiety? So in terms of other things, the recovery from the fatigue also is very important. Because positive perceived the psychological benefit of massage using the perceived recovery linear skill have been shown that during the recovery phase, the boxing performances and then after the training sessions and all that. So that you, you feel that the boxers have been, they did the study on the boxers and they found that they recover faster. So, you know, it's very important for the boxers. All right. So other than that, uh, despite the, the physiological fatigue uh, indicators such as blood platelet, heart rate, nine boxes reported that the massage positively affected the perceptions of recovery, following boxes performance, and it seems to be useful recovery. Study. So that the nine boxes all together they reported not only physiological but also the perceptions in terms of the um, you know recovery, the perceived that actually they recover faster. So I think this is what sometimes sports psychology, you cannot 100% sure that, all right, uh, everything is, is quantified. I, I think we just, <laughs> it's still psychology, you know, you have to understand that. And also the, the perceived recovery scale is the useful questionnaire that indicate whether the recovery, because it's short or easy to understand and all that. And then, however, the perceived recovery skill has not been widely used in the research study. And so that we, I will urge that the more people will venture into this so that uh, when people go for conducting any, let's say, example, they're doing uh, any training and all that. So how they perceive, and then they might use a uh, different methods in terms of recovery. So that use the perceived recovery uh, skill to, to go for that. Eh? And also, Many studies have been reported that a massage can be promote relaxation by improving psychological responses, I think for sure. Therefore, a further study for the unneeded uh, investigate the psychological mechanism of the massage technique. So which technique that uh, just now we are talking about, whether it's aggressive or whether it's slow and rhythmic and all that. So this result will help to provide uh, appropriate massage uh, application for their specific sports uh, purposes and all that. So I think, uh, most of the coaches, they wanted that, yeah? Uh, what is the outcome? I think with that, I would just say that uh, I don't take much of the time. And then with that, I just uh, say thank you very much for your time to listening to you. So I'm, I'm happy to accept any questions and all that. Please, thank you. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Lim Bun Hoi, for giving us such wonderful, informative, nice presentation, sports massage, fostering positive psychophysiological 
responses. We are very honored to have you here. And, uh, you know, we became aware of the sports massage, you know, fostering skin, positive um, psychophysiological responses. Once again, our first resource speaker for today, let's give a virtual warm applause, Associate Dr. Lim Bonhoy. All right. And of course, uh, we would like to present to you our certificate. Let me read the citation. International Association of Physical Education Sport Incorporated in collaboration with Physical Education Foundation of India, Swarnam Gujarat Sports University, and Batangas JPLTC Malvar College of Teacher Education. This certificate of appreciation is presented to for his commendable service rendered as keynote speaker that led to the success of the event, International Conference on Sports Psychology organized by the International Association of Physical Education Sports, IAPS, incorporated in collaboration with Physical Education Foundation of India, Swarnim Gujarat Sports University and Batanga State University, JPLTC Malvar College of Teacher Education. Given the seventh day of April 2022 via Zoom platform, signed by the Vice President of the International Association of Physical Education Sports, IAPS Incorporated, Dr. TJ B. Panganiban. President, International Association of Physical Education Sports, IAPS Incorporated, Dr. Jesus D. Argarin. Chairman, International Association of Physical Education Sports, Incorporated, Dr. Jimelson M. Santos. National Secretary, Physical Education Foundation of India, Dr. Pius Ain. And the Vice Chancellor, Swarnim Gujarat Sports University, Professor Dr. Arjun Singh Rana. Ladies and gentlemen, this certificate of appreciation is presented to Associate Professor Dr. Lim Bord Hoy. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Maraming salamat po in our language. Salamat. <laughs> salamat po. Salamat po. Salamat po. <laughs> Once again, welcome to the International Conference on Sports Psychology. And now, again, to introduce our next speaker is the Dean of the College of Teacher Education, Batanga State University, JPL Malvar, Dr. Nora V. Marasigan. Greetings to everyone. It is with great honor and pride to present to you our resource speaker for discussion one. Our resource speaker is a trainer of Paralympian, sports officer, and the faculty of the Department of Physical Education and Sports from Malavia National Institute of Technology, Jaipur, India. To lead us in discussion one, please welcome Dr. Subir Debna. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you all the dignitaries because uh, I think by naming, I maybe miss many. So it is a sports psychology conference, so I should not name anyone. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it was uh, good to know that many uh, speakers are still uh, waiting and all the participants are really wishing to know about the sports psychology. As told, I am absolutely a practical person who is working with the elite athlete. 
So I'll be speaking on the planning mental conditioning for elite athlete. Initially, I'll be speaking on the theoretical aspect, and then we'll go drop to the practical uh, way how we should do because of the it is only one way traffic I don't want. If you experience, I think that will be good. So without taking much of time, this is what exactly I've been doing. So those who are from India, they, uh, they can understand that I have worked with the cricket, then para-athletics, shooting, archery, and whatnot. So I'm basically a trainer. I train with the mental and the psychological level. Uh, the physical aspect is one of the things but unless until we really combine both physical aspect as well as the psychological aspect together, the result is just impossible. One can perform, but it cannot be a stiff graph. The graph will be all end with the play two, and maybe the performance will go down. So I thank again the IPAS that they have given me an opportunity. When we speak about the performance, there are so many factors. You can see from the wagon wheel that we need the determination, stress management, courage, leadership, communication, image visualization, consistent effort, motivation, self-talk, confidence, mental preparation, and concentration. So every component of this is very much essential for the performance. And in terms of the psychological aspect, also called your mental level. When you speak, say the determination. Determination, when you speak about the determination, we need to be a discipline first. Then devotion, determination will come all together. So what we need is our lifestyle skill. In no phase of our sports training, we really teach the player for the lifestyle. They want pizza or burger, we just give pizza or burger. They love to have cold drinks, yeah, we provide them cold drinks. Yeah, we are satisfying their psychological demand, but do you think it will help in the physical or so-called your health component? Certainly not. Then comes the stress management. Why the stress comes? It is only because of the poor lifestyle. I'm sleeping, let me to sleep. Don't disturb him because he's sleeping. So we how the, it has been created. The stress has been created to be managed. If you are having a healthy lifestyle and if you are absolutely a wellness, then definitely you will not face any sort of issues or the health issues or the psychological, maybe physical issues to manage it. Then it is the courage. Courage, you can understand. Yeah, I will do it. That is the courage. And the leadership. Most of the cases, we have been dragged by the coach or the trainer or maybe the other sports scientist. We have to lead. Being a sportsman, the sportsman has to lead. He should go to all the coaches, trainers, or the sports scientists for their better understanding. Then it is the communication and imaginary visualization. You can see that it is almost 90% of the nine out of 10. The, this communication, we miss out. No player at the highest level will really open their mouth. It is absolutely critical. You can't imagine that what back of the mind, something else is going on and they are speaking something else. But if you know really the pace reading, then you can understand that, yeah, something is wrong going on. And the visualization and imagery, all the coaches, all the trainers, they say, why can't you visualize? Suppose uh, if it is a gymnastic moment or simply a, a golfer, this same moment, they have to perform again and again, repeatedly the same. But unless until you can really form a brain image in your brain, if you cannot really create an image, then you cannot really go for implementation. As some way or the other, you may miss it. So for this, do we have any concept of preparing the things? 
No. Then it is a consistent effort. Again, I said it should be a discipline. So the con consistent effort should be 100%. Then it is motivation. And uh, since uh, I think from 9.45 itself in our Indian standard time, I was uh, watching that the Glenn is doing absolutely a fantastic job by motivating everyone. Yeah, you should do this thing, you should do that thing, you should be live, something, something, something. So this sort of motivation always, a smiling face is always required. A coach or a player, if he or she is a dull, then it means that they are having less motivated. They are less motivated and even whatever the dose you are giving, it will not work. Then it is a self-talk. We hardly teach the self-talk. We hardly, I'm telling, it, we hardly, at least in India, I can say, then it is a confidence. So the, what is confidence? Many a times I ask my students, why, what do you mean by confidence? Sir, this quality, that quality. I said, no, if you're knowledgeable, knowledgeable about the, your technique, then only you can say that, yeah, I am confident. Then it is the mental preparation. So the mental preparation is again a very, very important. We go for the physical warm-up. Are you going for preparing your mentally? Mostly it is no. Then it is a concentration. So before the event, suppose it is a heat or the trial is going on, that time your concentration level and the mental preparation level, it goes side by side. So if the concentration, if you cannot focus, like if I go for a shooting, at the time of triggering, you have to give 100% of your concentration because uh, at the fraction of a second, you will fire. So these all factors really make us to understand or to realize that why the sports psychology is absolutely important. So when the performance is not there, the mental fitness factors affecting performances are self-confidence. We say, yeah, today it is not the day and the confidence level of the player is not good. We just blame. My question is whether we taught him or her. Then it is degree of challenge. Suppose there is a strong opponent or you are playing the final. Then the degree of challenges are more and it increases. The next one is your anxiety. As already uh, Dr. Lim was telling a lot about the anxiety, you have to control the anxiety. How to control that? We must learn through the psychological skill training, then the nervousness. Nervousness is again the lack of preparation. If the preparation is not there, then nervousness is obvious. That is the weather condition. Then the spectators, media, family, team spirit, attitude. When you speak about the attitude, unless until you are having that attitude to win, there are many examples, some good athlete, they, their attitude is something different when they go for the final matches. Why? Because they understand and they know that once I will get a gold medal or a medal, then the media will crowd me and I have to reply so many things which are actually not in real. So they avoid. Just to avoid, they go for a poor performance. And motivation, obviously, it is the another factor which everyone we know. This is a tiger root. No need to give any explanation. He says, my mind is the biggest asset. I expect to win every tournament I play. And he is doing it. Without any challenge, he is doing it. He says, my mind. So our mind is important, not only the physical aspect. So the mind and the body will go together. If you are feeling sick, do you think you can study? Never. It is just impossible. It is a vice versa. I'm tired. My mind will not work. So this is how when we speak about the psychological skill training, it is a consistent practice of the mental or the psychological skill for enhancing sports performance 
increasing enjoyment or achieving self satisfaction while playing so we must understand it should be a it, it is a systematic consistent practice of mental or the psychological skill so from the childhood itself those who are into the school i will request you and it is my earnest request to all people that you should start teaching them how to really rehearse the how to visualize the skill which i will be taking in the in few minutes i believe and when we speak about the performance it is the skill skill means physical as as well as mental and the motivation this is the two so where i taught them the national parachuters for before the olympics so this is how actually things goes on and why it is needed why pst is needed your mind wandered during competition you are listening me or my deliberation at the same time back of the mind you are thinking something else because today sunday i need to go to with my friends something or the other you choked at a critical point in the competition i don't like to shoot now i don't like to play now because he is banging my ball if you are a cricketer you lack the desire of or motivation to perform i don't feel like to play many a times when an international or a elite athlete when they go for the regional competition or so called the national competition they usually make some decision that oh, i am a international player and i am going to play with a very low graded player then you lack the desire and your performance becomes absolutely the negative you lose the performance you become angry and frustrated with your own performance then the frustration will start booming up then you walk off the walk off in disgust after losing the game i tell you my athlete she scored 20 points plus in the tokyo olympics whatever the performance she was doing it in the practice time she performed 20 points higher than the position and if you ask is it possible to really again create the same score may may not be possible so the mental skill depends upon the mental toughness so unless until one is mentally tough and the mental toughness qualities are being promoted or educated it is just impossible i have seen many players and i have been attending many players after becoming india number 2 or the national number 2 they drop their performance fall down for a couple of years they are not in the in the team then you can understand what exactly going on in their mind they cry they cry literally they cry so the psychological skill at this are what the imagery the goal setting self talk physical relaxation technique attention motivation volition arousal regulation perceptual cognitive function and motor control so all the qualities has to be taken one after another but in a planned manner these are the five recommended mental skill usually we should give it is a relaxation then positive self talk and emotion energizing visualization concentration so unless until we give a proper way of handling the athlete then i don't believe that you can go for a competitive sports rather you are spending the time most of the time in a recreational sports so in competitive sports you cannot forego or you cannot avoid this skills now if you see it is a psychological techniques and the psychological skill the techniques are implementation intention the goal setting imagery self talk relaxation multi components mindfulness then cognitive restructuring then the last one is other techniques so this psychological technique again differ from individual to individual when there is an individual who needs maybe self talk more who needs mental imagery more who don't have any experience of mindfulness how you can expect them it is just impossible 
So according to the individual to individual, a psychology, those who are working as a trainer or the psychological trainer, it is your responsibility to really prepare and plan accordingly. So the planning has to be very, very technically and the skillful. Then the next two, if you go for the psychological skills, it is a personal development and life skills. When I say the personal development and the life skill, I consider this as the most important factor. The parents, the coach, the trainer, the peer group, or the, your fellow colleague should not push you for the performance, never. It is you who has to lead yourself. Then only things will move up. Then it is self. So you know, when the self, the inner intrinsic motivation will speak, yeah, Mr. Devnath, you have to do, then only you will move. Then the recovery skills. Already the last speaker has told lots about the recovery. So there are many things. The sports stretching is also there. Then uh, obviously massage plays a huge role. Then so many other methods are also there. And the coping school, skills, motivational skill, volition. Unless until you are having that urge to really do anything, then you will always complain with the pain. It, uh, some pain is there, even I don't feel like to do. So something, something. You will come up with all lame excuses. It is an attention skill. When to attend. Suppose a cricketer is coming or I am going to throw a ball and you will catch the ball. So at what point you should really concentrate? That is important. It's not the fact that I will keep on keeping my eyes and absolutely focusing on the movement. So a cricketer is running maybe for 30 years and if he's releasing the ball at the time of loading, the best batsman always have a look how he's holding the ball and how he's releasing the ball. And it is an arousal regulation skill. How to arouse if somebody is going down before the, any competition. So there should be some arousal regulation, how to really boot up so that he can compete without any hesitation. Then the perceptual and the cognitive skills. How you perceive the cognitive skills. That is again important. The motor control skill, then the communication and the leadership skill. So these all skills has to be taught. And uh, you know, if you want to give all these things, there should be some periodization. So without going much into detail, in the periodization, you must have that scope of your mental skill training or the psychological skill training. So a standard periodization, periodized training, micro mesocycle consists of sequence of four microcycles that is preparatory, competitive, picking, and recovery. So without going much into detail, this is a yearly training plan, which I used to use for the cricketers. The main competition period is a huge, almost four to five months. So this is my own design. And absolutely, if you go on the right hand side, in the psychological aspect, it is goal setting, improve mental concentration, resistance to fatigue, stress management, mental toughness, the development of competition and strategies. So the question is how you start with. My way of starting is just go for a pre-test. You know your player very closely. Then you start practicing. So in repeated phase one or two or maybe in the pre-competition or during the main competition, what all you need to give, you will be clear and thorough. So if you see in the bottom, absolutely, it is a psychological training for initially at the preparatory phase, you have to go for the psychological technique and skills, which I'll be taking in detail. The development of mental toughness and competition strategy. In the preparatory phase two and during the pre-competition, you have to be absolutely clear about the mental toughness and the competition strategy. How we'll play with whom? And you must know the opponents also. Then the main competition is the simulation competitive strategies. 
So this simulation nowadays, all the scientists, those who are engineers, they keep on doing something or the other simulation. In sports also, we really simulate the things, which just give a pressure, we give a critical situation and ask the people to really go for. So this is how the psychological aspect goes on. Now, when we go for the annual planning for the mental training in the phases and the training goals. In general preparatory phase, you have to evaluate the mental skill. Whether the player knows it or not, you can serve the questionnaire. You can have a good interview. First and foremost important thing is you have to win the heart of the player. Then only he will speak out. If not, if you think that I have asked the guy to do this thing, that thing, and he is not responding, it is not my job then actually you cannot really come up and you should leave or forgive the sports. So evaluate the mental skills, then learn the basic mental skills in a quiet setting. So which we'll be doing it practically and set the goals. What is his goal? Maybe he wants to play a single goal. Maybe he's having multiple goals. So you must know it assess last year's program or plan whether he's having that same mental training goals in the previous years or not. If not, then you start from the beginning. Most of the cases, you won't find any program which he has attained. So it is our responsibility or the moral responsibility, I should say, to really start with the new program if he's not having the old program. Then it is a specific preparatory phase. It is maintain basic mental skills. Whatever the mental skills you have learned, you should maintain it. Then use mental skills to help attain training objectives. Whatever the training objective, suppose in the finals or maybe in the pre-competition, I will shoot in this way or I will bowl in this way. I will bat in this way. I will go for the double somersault, something, something. So everything should be absolutely clear. Adapt and practice mental skills in event-specific situation. During the warm up time, what you should do during the warm up time itself, you should start visualizing what exactly you are going to do. Then, after the warm up is over, then you should go with the visual training. Then, ask your athlete to perform practically. He or she will give absolutely fantastic result. This is my challenge. Then, in the pre competitive, phase, develop and practice focus plan. When to focus? What do we do? When you see the performance is going on, we always in a turmoil whether I can do it or not. If the negative remarks come to your mind, absolutely you cannot do anything. That is, you have gone down. Use focus plan in simulations. How to focus? Because you have practiced and you must know what to really simulate. Then maintain basic mental skills. You have to maintain all the skills. You have to practice. So in periodization, you have to keep all the single, single mental skill factors individually to maintain it. This in the specific preparatory, use mental skill to prepare for the specific opponents and competitors. Those who are cricket lover or maybe any uh, other opponents, you can see that some people are after with some typical opponent. I have to win against the opponent A or B. They forget other performance, but it is my feeling or my planning that I will win against somebody. So this is good, but not always. The second point is evaluate and define focus plan. If you are focusing, you must know how to evaluate it. If I have been trying a international player, I'm telling the jinx of at least three, four day, days, he will practice the same concept. Then only he will certify, yeah, it is working or not. Even though we know that it is too little to understand because the preparation time or to accessibility time, it is not less than 42 days. 
So use mental skills to aid region generation and lower the stress. Use mental skill for stress management. When you go for the mental skill, then the stress management is least needed. Because with the mental skills, you know, after 11, I will shoot. After 11, I play match and I know my role. So goes the response to fear, nervousness and stress. These are the measurements of fear. If you are having still fear, nervousness and stress, then actually you cannot play. And if it is less preparation, then only it is leading to your nervousness and fearness. Then learn from the experience and adapt your training. Then evaluate the training by the progress of your scores and adjust the plan as you see fit. So you must have an evolution. So periodically, maybe after seven days, either your coach or maybe you can maintain your own diary or the logbook. Then only you can understand using this mental skill, I have developed this. Or if not, then I have to reschedule the concept of PST. So in tapering, mental practice is critical at this point. Recuperate and save energy mentally and physically such that shooters can pick at the major competition. Maybe shooter or maybe any athlete. So in tapering means just to reduce your workload. Many times what happened, uh, especially I'm working in an institute where the engineers, they're studying overnight to write the exam next day. And in most of the cases it's happening. So they adopt the same concept in the sports also. They practice a lot before the competition and they don't believe on the tapering. Once they fall down, once the performance goes down, then they realize, sir, something is wrong. I said, this is what exactly I used to say. At least three days before the competition, you must be relaxed and you must regenerate yourself so that you have ample amount of energy to really perform better during the competition. And in the transition period, relax, you are on rest. You must know this concept. The small child or the small or the little players, they forget, yeah, transition, it doesn't make any sense to them. They always want to play. So if we really go for the scientific planning, and if we plan every mental concept, then only we can do the best. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a small tips I just want to give through, it is called psychological skill training technique, how we should start. If, uh, if the organizer permit me, maybe five to 10 minutes, it will be wonderful. So uh, please all the participants, you just close your eyes, sit in a comfortable position. Please try, I will love to get a feedback. Now you are inhaling and exhaling out. Just bring the focus or the concentration absolutely on your breathing technique. You are inhaling, feel the oxygen is going through the nostrils, going through the windpipe and your lungs are filled with oxygen. And at the same time, the stomach is also inflated. And in the reverse process of exhalation, you are squeezing your ab and the carbon dioxide is moving out of the body. When you do this psychological skill training, make it a point that we are arousing our subconscious mind so that the technique really retains in our subconscious mind only. Whatever the thoughts coming into your mind, let it to come, it will go of its own. Again, I repeat, 
whatever the thoughts are coming into your mind let it to come it will go of its own but you are only focusing your breathing process keep cool calm and your concentration should be only on the breathing process again i repeat if any thoughts are coming into your mind please don't stop it let it to come let it be a gauge wave it will come and it will pass on from the mind feel you are relaxed slowly slowly gently you squeeze your anal part and feel the body is getting cool and calm you can squeeze your buttock if you are sitting just suck the anus inside just focus on the same part of your anus and you will find that the body is really getting cool and calm at some point of your time you might have experienced or you might have practiced called broad or long jump <clears throat> recollect your best time when you have jumped longer what you have done you have gone to the pit imagine that you are in the field of play you have seen the pit maybe it is a sandy pit you jumping board and then you have taken few steps maybe 13 14 maybe up to 30 maybe 25 years you have measured it just visualize think that absolutely you are sitting in front of a mirror and you are able to see what exactly i am directing now the coach might have told you to take a jump from your strong leg and accordingly you have taken or measured the steps you are relaxed at the starting point imagine absolutely you are relaxed and then you start visualizing that yeah i need to take a jump maybe with the left leg and then start your running and accelerating and take a step and jump you take a your technique you apply your technique and jump if you have landed or if you couldn't take a proper jump it is fine there is no any guilty but you yeah, again will be doing the same thing you just break the focus and try to imagine what you are supposed to do we are going for a long jump i repeat we are going for a long jump whatever the technique you have been applying you just imagine how to do the things speak to your brain what i am i going to do the technique will remain with you only from the starting point again inhale and relax then you will again continue the same technique and take a long jump and land the timing which you are taking don't end up immediately because if you are taking say 25 to 30 years run it means almost you will take 
three to four seconds. Do it very, very slowly. Whatever the techniques you are doing, I'm telling the long jump. You, your timing, your the technique or the execution time and the mental skill training time should be at par. There should not be any difference of the timing. So in this way, if we start teaching the peers, what will happen? They will understand the process. Now what we are doing? We are going for the physical. Yeah, you have to do this thing. You can't do this type of movement. Then what will happen? People will just, they will miss out. The small students, they will find it so difficult that I did the best. But my coaches say, coach says, you have done blunder. So suppose a runner is running and he or she is unable to keep the upper body little bending so that it becomes a dynamic, uh, sorry, so that the CG falls ahead of the body. So this you have to learn or to teach him or her through this method. So the method is absolutely you just make 100% relaxed. The relaxation time I have taken less and then you will increase. So now you can rub your palms and can keep on your face and can open your eyes. So with this, I'm just going to make it over. So I must thank the International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated. And thanks for understanding with this uh, language. It is again a Thailand language and from Indian side, it is Namaskar. Over to organizer. If anyone is having any question, I can take up provided if uh, the, there is any time. All right, thank you so much. Dr. Super Dana for giving us an amazing and excellent presentation. I think those people who have questions, we can entertain all your questions right after all the presenters finish the presentation. That's, that's nice. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you, Glenn, Parela. You have been amazing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Once again, thank you so much. To our speaker, Dr. Subhartan Nath, and allow us to present the certificate of appreciation. Let me read a citation. International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated, in collaboration with Physical Education Foundation of India, Swarnim Gujarat Sports University, and Batanga State University, JPLPC Malvar College of Teacher and Education presents this certificate of appreciation to for his commendable service rendered as resource speaker that led to the success of the event International Conference on Sports Psychology organized by the International Association of Physical Education Sports IAPS incorporated in collaboration with Physical Education Foundation of India, Swarnim Gujarat Sports University, and Batanga State University, JPLPC Malvar College of Teacher Education, given the 17th day of April 2022 via Zoom. Signed, Dr. T.J. B. Panganiban, Vice President, International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated. Dr. Jesus D. Argarin, President, International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated. Chairman, International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated, Dr. Jewelson M. Santos. The National Secretary of Physical Education Foundation of India, Dr. Hain, and the Vice Chancellor, Swarnim 
Gujarat Sports University, Professor Dr. Arjun Singh Rana. Ladies and gentlemen, this certificate of appreciation is presented to Dr. Subir Damnat. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone. And being, I have having some uh, prior engagement, so I'll be leaving. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Maraming salamat po in our language. Salute to you. Salute. I have to learn to your language then. Yes, sure, sure, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. And now let's proceed to our next presenter and to introduce. Once again, may I call the Dean of the College of Teacher Education, Batanga State University, JPLTC Malvar, Dr. Nora V. Marasigan. A pleasant afternoon to each and everyone. It is with great pride to introduce to you our resource speaker for a discussion too. This afternoon's resource speaker is from Indira Gandhi Institute of Physical Education and Sports Sciences from the University of Delhi. To be in the lead for discussion too, please welcome Professor Dr. Lalit Sharma. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much all. And it's my uh, proud privilege and I am indebted that the, you have invited me for a talk to the, on the topic that is the psychological periodization. See, uh, I think uh, my previous speakers have made my task slightly easy because when chairperson of the uh, International Association of Physical Education and Sports Incorporated, Dr. Jolson spoke, then the one part of my presentation was very much uh, covered by him when we say that the importance of the psychological uh, in sports. I think the slide is visible to all of you. So, uh, and the part of my presentation, then my friend, Dr. Subir spoke, then he also emphasized the importance of the psychological preparation for a sports person. So friends, uh, see, I am since I'm working in a teacher's training institution, and my concern is more that how, which is a more challenge in today's and especially in India and all the Asian countries, that how to incorporate the psychological preparation or how to integrate rather the psychological preparation with the sports training. So that is the biggest challenge we have. Now, when I'm saying this, that how we can integrate the psychological preparation, then it has to be uh, understood properly uh, there is some issue i think yeah so uh, when i'm saying that the challenge which we have today is the psychological intervention and that how psychological intervention can be an integral part of the sports training that is the biggest challenge which we have and i think that we are going to address this issue only that how we can integrate because the uh, the clashes between the psychologist and the coaches is that at least in Indian conditions I'm uh, aware of that when you approach to teach to the students on the field there are certain uh, they are uncomfortable they they don't allow rather the free access to the psychological uh, the sports psychologist to enter into the field that is the uh, actual position on the field then my concern is how we can integrate into the sports training now uh, friends one thing which i wholeheartedly believe that in the sports setting it is the coach who is a driver the coach who is the leader and 
each one of us whether it is a sports scientist whatever type of sports scientist we are there to help the coach so that the performance can be announced of an athlete that one should be clear to each and every one if we are working with the coach if we are uh, working in line with the coach then i think our purpose can be met our objectives can be achieved and that is what our concern is now throughout the world and in india also sometime the athletes are using the psychological techniques with their own convenience uh, why i have used this word convenience is because their training is not very systematic they are sometime when they feel they are using it sometime they are taking help of the sports psychologist also but that help or that intervention is entirely on the basis of the athlete's wish and sometime it is against the wish of their coach which i don't want if you want to succeed as a system if you want to create a system then everything has to be incorporated everything has to be integrated so that integration is required and how that integration within the training within the training is possible that is my concern here in this talk is yes. Uh, i would try to finish it off within the stipulated time the only thing is because the one of the part my previous speakers have already covered so my concern will be directly that how we can incorporate how we can integrate with our sports training with our training system as my previous speaker also talked about this integration of psychological preparation with the physical with the sports training or with the physical preparation is only possible when we incorporate this process into the periodization that within the periodization and why it is so to balance the psychological load with the physical training load is our biggest challenge we have to maintain a balance we have to maintain a balance between the psychological load as well as the physical load because physical load is also inevitable uh, to get the success the periodization was used throughout the world from the ancient times russia started it they started logically rather than scientifically then is germany romania canada and china they were more scientific to incorporate and now the whole west has popularized this concept i'm quickly covering that because i know everybody knows the periodization and the periodization has a three phase that is the preparatory competitive and the transitional phase now uh when i'm saying this that the preparatory competitive and the transitional phase now when you are saying this that the preparatory com <coughs> preparatory competitive and the the transitional phase which is important in that particular says now the question comes what we need to do during the preparatory phase competitive phase and the transitional phase the preparatory phase as you all know that in sports setting also it is a preparation of an athlete then obviously for the psychological preparation also it will be a preparatory period development of performance contributing factor and the improvement of performance now what contribute to performance plenty plenty of uh, things are there one more thing uh, i would like to make it clear here that there can't be a single pill for each athlete for everyone there can't be a single pill the psychological training has to be an individualistic the nature of the psychological training is individualistic in association with in association with the coaches 
you have to take into account the coaches also you have to take into account the uh, the coaches and that how the coach can be incorporated in that particular uh, setting then we have the competitive period that is the realization of the athlete potential during the participation and the maintenance during the competition the main challenge for psychologist as well as for the coaches for the maintenance phase that how you can maintain that process bompa has <coughs> divided that the division of the annual plan is the to ensure the optimal performance now keeping in mind the what kind of sports you are teaching our psychological preparation changes and our periodization also changes because in certain sports our preparatory phase is 3 to 4 months but in power sports or in individual sports sometime a melting peaking pattern comes there are multiple competitions so accordingly you have to arrange the periodization the number of periodization uh, process that it is a single double multiple and that is the prerogative of the coach that you have to always in association with the coach you have to incorporate your psychological plan that is the biggest uh, thing is now during the preparatory phase what should be the guidelines what you have to follow the guideline of the what, what you need to collect from the athletes is the gather information about the athletes background as my uh, previous uh, speaker has also shown you one slide which is showing a wheel and there are number of uh, a number of pst psychological skills which are shown there now uh, what we have to do is we have to every athlete that profiling is required because uh, every athlete has a certain strength and the certain uh, weaknesses that we have to identify we need to identify that what is the actual strength of my athlete and what is the strength of my uh, the weakness of my athlete that has to be taken care now once that gather uh, you have gathered the information of the athlete then you are switching the psychologist should discuss the training plan with the coach and the athlete that what is the training plan of the coach what you want to improve what you want to focus on during the preparatory phase because what coach is intend to do with athlete a psychologist has to plan accordingly a psychologist is a facilitator if athlete if the coach is want to develop the motor component of the athlete or the skill learning of an athlete then the psychologist has to incorporate the certain techniques through which the skill learning can be facilitated if an athlete's arousal is a problem arousal regulation is a problem or a problematic area then the psychologist has to incorporate the techniques and the strategies that how that psychological regulation can be maintained that is the uh, basic idea uh, my uh, previous uh, speaker uh, and my friend dr subir has presented one slide and where he has shown the tiger wood now the tiger wood that said that my mind is my biggest asset now friends sometime uh, your mind is your biggest asset but sometime that mind itself is becomes your biggest liability now why why i am saying so because the tiger wood said i expect to win every tournament i play and it's an asset but suppose you are one of the athlete things that i am scared i fear that i may get injured now if your player is thinking in that manner that he is scared of doing something 
he is scared of learning new skills he is scared of attempting new skills because he may get injured that it comes in then what you are going to do there the psychologist comes first you have to overcome his fear through different techniques through desensitization as you all know that we are using for overcoming the fear also so <clears throat> that is the challenge which we have and that can be an asset but at the same time it can be an a liability also which the psychologist has to work on then the emphasis on the assessment uh assessment is obviously because you know the level of the player everyone has certain strength and when you have certain strength then you should know that at to what level you are achieving that and where the intervention is required i'll give you one more example of that intervention here is now suppose that uh you are player or your athlete is having a problem to understand the anxiety regulation now first thing is whether that anxiety is working as a facilitator to your athlete or that anxiety is working as a debilitating to the performance that you have to identify because every athlete every individual or every athlete is uh, performance is not get hampered through anxiety that you have to understand sometime some players they take anxiety as a facilitator they work hard they take it anxiety they they uh, if they are anxious they prepare more and then they excel also now in that case anxiety is not a debilitating effect and anxiety is a facilitator because that anxiety is motivating you to do more work hard and put more efforts to get success now if that anxiety is having a debilitating effect on the performance then what you are going to do is then the one way of doing it could be that you change the cognitive uh, evaluation of that anxiety you understand the cognitive interpretation of that anxiety by asking the two questions the first question is whether that particular incident or particular competition is important for me or not if it is important then you have to work on it but if that is not important at all it's not going to create any anxiety to your player and the second subsequent question is that am i equipped to handle that situation if you are equipped to handle any given situation and that is what training comes that is what training is now the <clears throat> there are main goal of physical preparation are two to develop the relevant fitness component and to refine the specific motor abilities that are required now the first goal of the preparation is possible by achieving the three things that is motivational aspect goal setting and mental physical recovery is see one more thing i would like to cover here is when and where to give the psychological preparation that is very crucial when and where to give psychological preparation psychological preparations there are labs also there are field also because fields are our lab in physical education the fields are the lab of ours but there are lab setting also when you want to teach the psychological skills it is my humble submission that if we could use the labs proper controlled lab then your learning would be faster but when you are going for a competitive or when you are going for a specific preparation then it should be the field 
because then you have to incorporate your learning with the physical task so to achieve the first goal of physical preparation that should focus on the motivational aspect goal setting and the mental skill recovery uh, how that motivational aspect you can take into how that goal setting can be taken into will uh, will discuss with certain uh, examples but Uh, later on at the later part of my uh, presentation when i'm uh, going to talk about the certain model that how we can do this and for achieving the second goal of physical preparation that is the psychological strategies such as the relaxation imagery self talk and concentration is required my dear friend the biggest uh, judgment and biggest uh, part on the psychologist is when to use what because when you have to introduce to your athlete which strategies that is the planning and if you incorporate your psychological preparation with the physical preparation then you have to be very very careful that how you need to incorporate and how that is possible the <clears throat> this sh should be integrated within the athletes pre competitive and the pre performance unit now why why i am saying this it should be the pre competitive and the pre uh, is the technical elements of the practice on his or her self regulation effective decision making and for a second because the tactical element required a systematic training and the practice of an athlete along with the physical training it is the technical training also required now this is a a, a road map that how we can do and what are the uh, these are the physical um, barriers rather you can say that how we can achieve uh, now suppose your athlete is having the problem with the fear of failure or your athlete is having the problem of high anxiety or athlete is suffering from the attentional focus or the low self confidence or the negative thoughts in now th there are various techniques the coach and the psychologist has to collaborate has to collaborate together to share this opinion that how the fear of failure can be handled with my players how the loss of attention why the loss of attention is there why that high anxiety of a player is there and how that low self and what are the negative thought which are roping in for your player which are uh, roping in and what is the problem of an athlete that is the challenge uh, which we have now these techniques can also help you to overcome the emotional and the mental barriers now these are the mental barriers which hampers your performance now how you can overcome that there are different techniques like suppose uh, we can say that the negative thoughts are roping why negative thoughts are coming as i said that i may get injured that is a negative thought which is roping in now what you can do is you convert that thought you reframe that thought into a positive one or the physical part of it is that you first develop in that athlete the prerequisite prerequisite physical capabilities so that the athlete feel confident that now i am physically confident to carry out that skill advanced skill now if you are not preparing athlete properly if you are not preparing and the that negative thought rope in then sometime the problem occurs now that is what uh i uh, want to discuss with all of you that how we can and what we should do 
now there are um, four tables which talks about general preparation specific preparation competition phase and the transitional phase what should be the aim of the uh, general preparation of the psychological general preparation is to learn basic psychological strategies for developing self regulation activities now where you are going to do it labs i would say that we should develop the labs we are in a controlled environment the an athlete should be taught the different psychological strategies for developing the self regulation abilities when you are switching to a specific preparation then it is a sport specific what is required in your sports specifically you need to train that athlete and here you can uh, uh, club this training on the field also lab plus field you make your athlete to practice this skills to modify these skills according to the sports requirement and on the field you can always take your athlete to that and when you are moving to a competition phase then transfer and apply psychological skill to the field and competition see as you all know uh, competition is as important as that you think that it is important is yes. so how much important your competition is that will determine the anxiety and the preparation of you as an athlete how much importance your coach puts in how much importance you are giving to that particular competition that has to be taken care and the competitive preparations are surely on the field only then during the transitional phase the psychological preparation can be at home also it is not only that you are using that recovery technique on the field or on the lab no it can be considered at the home also the second part is the special attention the special attention is the positive attitude towards the daily training load has to be emphasized combined dominant psychological skill relevant to the sport skill it is a specific training and that is how you have to move now there is one model and uh, i would say that uh, this model is proposed by the judge and the gilreth that who is suggesting that how you can incorporate the psychological training into your physical training that is the challenge which we have now in the preparation phase that is general and the specific there are three things are important one is motivation another is the arousal regulation and the opportunity of feedback now why, why motivation is important here is that is the biggest question to carry out that load to prepare yourself physically as well as psychologically you need to take load and to take the physical load the internal intrinsic motivation is required which is preparing you for the perseverance which you which you can take the load for a longer period of time arousal awareness comes through the techniques that how how you can do it how you can incorporate that particular things then we have pre competitive routine during the preparatory phase also before the competition you have to learn to practice the different skills along with the motivation what motivates you and you have to learn to the tech, to motivate yourself you have to learn the different skills of arousal regulation different relaxation techniques and that relaxation techniques has to be mastered during the practice preparatory phase if you are not mastering those prepar psychological preparation if you are not mastering your 
relaxation technique during the preparatory phase but probably you may not be able to continue during the competitive phase and then comes the confidence now confidence is uh, my friend also talks about <clears throat> dr subir that if you are having the low confidence then somehow you have to identify that your skills level are low if you will incorporate if you will accumulate the requisite amount of skills if you will accumulate and you feel will master the requisite skills then obviously your confidence will boost and sometime a psychologist has to help the psychologist need to incorporate that when your athlete is feeling too low then ask him to compete with some other lower ability player because there is nothing succeed like success once you get the taste of the success you have to learn to the various experiences and the verbal persuasion always work when the that, that appreciation comes from the coach when appreciation comes from the significant one when appreciation from from comes from your peer group that always boost our confidence and it has to be taken care uh, at the end just for an example i am giving you this softball routine model where uh what should be done how you can uh, incorporate that training now uh, you know that goal setting is an important thing and it has to be practiced during the preparatory phase only but my question is to what aspect of goal setting would you focus on whether the outcome goal performance goal or the process goal or all three that has to be taken care i would say the performance and outcome goals are as important as the process goal teach your athlete to love the journey i know destination is always important aim is always important but if we learn to enjoy the journey the outcome will be more pleasant the achievement will be more pleasant the test the destination will be more pleasant because you learn to enjoy that process of achieving your goal also if you learn to enjoy that process of goal that will definitely help you that will definitely help you to make your journey more smooth and more fruitful again i would say that this all psychological preparation should coincide with your physical training and coach should also be with your side to prepare this psychological training then only your psychological training can be incorporated with the physical training otherwise uh, the conflict and uh, and if you are uh, doing it in a different parts then the the benefits of the psychological training cannot be transferred to the uh, actual sense to the athlete and that is what uh, i have to say because uh, there are other aspects also of the uh, psychological periodization that is the different models are there uh, throughout the world people are using different model some other time we'll talk about that because uh, within the time limit i think uh, this much introduction and this much is and thank you very much uh, <clears throat> the last uh, I, i would say as a teacher all because i am in a teacher training institute whatever model you are talk about but education should be the first thing educate the people educate the coaches educate the trainer educate the athlete that it is required once they know that it is required 
then only they will come to for then only they will come to the same boat and until and unless all people those who are supporting the athlete to achieve will come on the same boat the success cannot be achieved so education is the first education of the coaches education of the athlete education of the sports scientist also that they have to follow the coach their education is also required then acquisition of mental training practice automation implementation and finally performance it is the root which uh, again the process which i am talking about is important to achieve thank you very much for your patience sitting hope uh, thank you very much thank you so much professor dr lalit sharma for such interesting presentation you know people are commenting that the presentation was really was really useful was really significant was really amazing thank you thank you so much for this wonderful session and with that we would love to provide you and present to you the certificate of appreciation let me read the citation sir international association of physical education and sports incorporated in collaboration with the physical education foundation of india Swarnim Gujarat Sports University and Batanga State University JPLTC Malvar College of Teacher Education present this certificate of appreciation to for his commendable service rendered as resource speaker that led to the success of the event International Conference on Sports Psychology organized by the Inter International Association of Physical Education Sports incorporated in collaboration with physical education foundation of india so our nim gujarat sports university and batanga state university jpltc malwar college of teacher education given the 17th day of april 2022 via zoom platform signed the vice president of the international association of physical education sports incorporated Dr. DJ D. Panganiban, President, International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated, Dr. Jesus D. Argarin, signed by the Chairman of the International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated, Dr. Jewelson M. Santos, signed by the National Secretary, Physical Education Foundation of India, Dr. Tiyas Hain, and of course, the vice chancellor swarnim gujarat sports university professor dr arjun singh rana ladies and gentlemen this certificate of appreciation is presented to professor dr lalit sharma thank you so much sir for such an amazing presentation yes thank you sir and for those who are asking for the feedback link we will be providing you the evaluation link right after the concluding speech yes again uh, thank you so much dr professor lalit sharma and now i think we are down to the last but not the least speaker and to introduce that may i call once again the dean of the college of teacher education of batanga state university jplc malwar dr nora v marasiga good afternoon to everyone in the zoom meeting and to the viewers watching this international conference via facebook live i am so privileged to introduce to you our resource speaker for discussion 3 She is a chartered counseling psychologist who provides cognitive behavioral therapy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Sarah Phillips. Good 
we're going to have time to think about what psychological first aid looks like in the context of supporting each other and those that we provide care to in the context of a post-incident intervention. And so this webinar is really focusing on the use of PFA following a critical incident. The previous webinar on the Hub focused on PFA in the context of general staff wellbeing during the pandemic. Um, and at the River Centre and on the Hub, we often hear how staff, including managers, are not sure about how to use PFA or lack confidence in their skills. And there seems to be a lot of uncertainty or concern about using it. And I think people are often wary about it because it's about responding to someone who has experienced a traumatic incident and staff are worried about doing or saying the wrong thing. So it's important to remember that PFA is a humane response to someone who is distressed and that anyone can use PFA and you don't need specific training in it. And in this webinar, I'm going to, um, there are a couple of case studies or scenarios illustrating PFA in practice in, in the workplace. And hopefully that will give you a chance for you to think about how you can provide PFA um, in your place of work and develop your confidence in developing PFA. So as Ray mentioned, um, there were, we, we had, um, we had a webinar on psycholo psychological first aid in the workplace on the hub um, back in June. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that the link for this can be put in the chat so that if, if you want the link, it's there. But also NES has a really good module on PFA for COVID and you will need a Turas account to, to watch that, but it, that's, that's another really good resource available out there. So what is psychological first aid? PFA is an internationally recognised model for providing humane, supportive and practical assistance to fellow human beings who've recently suffered, suffered exposure to serious stresses. It's about providing non-obtrusive practical care and support. It's about assessing needs and concerns. It's about helping people to address basic needs and listening to people, but not pressuring them to talk. It's about comforting people and helping them to feel calm and about protecting people from further harm, including those who may need special attention. So why use PFA? Evidence tells us that people are more likely to be able to cope with and recover from traumatic or stressful events if they feel safe, feel connected to others, have access to social, physical and emotional support and feel able to help themselves as individuals and or communities. It's well known that in the case of major disasters, the majority of affected, affected individuals, families and communities cope with great resilience and do not require more formal psychiatric or psychological intervention. However, a rise in psychological morbidity is to be expected. Psychosocial support recognises that our well-being comes from a combination of factors and aims to enhance or restore these to, pe to help people cope at times of stress or distress. These factors include having our basic needs met, such as shelter, money, food, and the avail availability of good social support and positive coping skills. The River Centre was commissioned by the Scottish Government to, de to develop guidance targeted at responding to the psychosocial and mental health needs of people affected by emergencies. And this guidance, based on the principles of PFA, is available in the Preparing Scotland document. There are a number of components of effective psychological first aid. There's no particular order to follow, as the order will depend on the individual and the emergency. The components should be modified to match the needs of the individual. And it might be helpful at this point to spend a moment on, on debriefing and in what ways PFA differs from psychological debriefing. 
the concepts of debriefing and psychological debriefing can be potentially confusing in terms of what they refer to, and therefore a bit of clarity on definitions may be helpful. Some of you may be very familiar with the terms medical or hot debriefing. This refers to gathering people involved in difficult situations, for example, a patient death. And so gathering people together immediately after the incident has occurred in order to discuss the professional and practical needs of a team at that point, e.g. what went well, didn't go well, and how best the team can be supported. Cold debriefing refers to a more in-depth discussion with the staff involved in a difficult situation days or weeks after it. The purpose is usually an opportunity for professional reflection and learning rather than the sharing of emotional responses. And then there's psychological debriefing or critical incident stress management. Concepts of psychological debriefing or critical incident stress debriefing were developed in the 1980s and 90s, primarily for use with emergency service personnel. They encourage the processing of a single incident traumatic event through a series of stages in one session. The debriefing session would last from one to three hours and ideally take place between 24 to 72 hours after the incident. The intent behind this was to reduce future symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Psychological debriefing became popular for a time due to anecdotal reports that it was helpful and useful. However, research into its effectiveness began to challenge this position, and in 2001, findings from a large-scale review of the literature by the Cochrane Group reported that this type of debriefing was not effective and could be harmful to some people and should not be used. So in light of the emerging literature against single-session psychological debriefing, psychological first aid was proposed as an alternative. PFA is an evidence-informed modular approach developed to help people in the immediate aftermath of an incident. It is designed to reduce the initial distress caused by traumatic events and to foster short and long-term adaptive functioning and coping. PFA is not counselling, nor is it asking the person to analyse their situation or pressuring them to talk. Instead, PFA is based on a set of principles that we know help people to cope with and recover from traumatic and distressing situations. The seven components of psychological first aid are, one, care for immediate needs, two, protect from further threat or risk, three, comfort and console, four, support for pr practical tasks, five, provide information on coping, six, connect with social support, seven, educate about normal responses. And I'm going to go into more detail of these components later in the webinar. And it's important to remember that this approach includes elements such as compassionate listening, psychoeducation and normalising. So, what PF is not counselling, it's not psychological debriefing, and it's not asking a person to analyse their situation or pressurising a person to talk about their feelings, nor is it something that only professionals can do. And I think that's really important to remember that you don't need to be a trained professional to use PFA. It's not something that everybody affected by an emergency or an incident will need. It's about remembering that people should neither be encouraged or discouraged from giving detailed accounts of their experience, but rather given the opportunity to talk if and when they choose to do so. It's really important to remember that it's not about saying somebody can't talk about it if they want to. And you as an individual also need to be mindful that if you have somebody who's experienced something traumatic, you need to be mindful that you feel able to manage supporting them about the incident. And I'm going to come back to this point later on. Okay, 
So identifying the need for PFA. So as a manager or a colleague, how do, you, how do you identify when you need to use PFA? So when should you be using it? So when there's a direct threat to you and or your colleagues, or when there's been an accident involving you and or your colleagues, or when people have serious injuries or people who are dying or have lo lo lost a loved one, or when there's intense human suffering, especially of the vulnerable, vulnerable, including children, older adults, people with a learning disability, or when you encounter human cruelty or violence, when there's been a major incident or emergency. And again, it's important to remember that PFA is not just used following major incident or emergencies. In the course of our work, for those of us working in health and social care, we can encounter situations in which it would be appropriate to use PFA quite frequently. And as Ray mentioned, PFA is the model that the National Wellbeing Hub adopted when the hub was first developed. And it's also reflected the use of PFA to support start, staff at the start of the pandemic. So I think it might be helpful for us to think about the factors that influence how someone responds to stressful situations. Our age has an impact. So where we are in the life cycle can have an impact on how, how we cope. Whether we're young with, with relatively little experience or whether we're older with more experience or where we're at in terms of um, our own personal situation, what's going on at home. So our age has an impact. Other factors include levels of support, being connected with others and our, our willingness to seek help, being able to discuss difficult emotions with others. The severity of the event will have an impact on our responses, our prior experiences with distressing events, some people may have experienced a number of traumatic incidents over the years and that build up may be the thing that causes them to to struggle with the last event physical and mental health has an impact our perceived ability to cope with stressful situations and our resilience so let's think a little bit about what helps people be well or resilient at work. Having a clear role, so knowing what we are doing and why we are doing it. Having a sense of a common purpose with our team. Feeling competent in our work, so having the appropriate training and being ready for events. Having supportive colleagues, so knowing each other well and having confidence in your colleagues' knowledge and skills, having mutual respect and trust and knowing that your colleague has got your back. And that there, that there is a balance between resources and demands and that the demands don't exceed, exceed our resources. And our ability to distance ourselves. So recognising our professional selves as well as our personal selves and being able to step back from our work. Feeling valued. Feeling comfortable to talk about how we feel and support from our family. All of these things help us to be resilient at work. So now I'd like you just to spend a little bit of time thinking about situations that you may already have used PFA in. And you might not even have been aware that you're using PFA. And just think a bit about how you responded to colleagues. I wanted to spend a little time looking at the components in a bit more depth. Remember, not all the components will be needed in every situation. And it's not 
not a linear process. You may need to return to components at different times. So care for immediate needs. What is needed will depend on the situation or the event. At its most extreme, for example, if you're working with somebody who's experienced a house fire or an RTC, it may involve treating injuries, providing shelter, clothing and food. In other cases, it may not be so obvious what is needed. It may be about finding somewhere quiet for you and the individual to sit, to have a conversation, to enable you to check in with them what their immediate needs are. It's also worth considering who is the best person to have that conversation with them. If it's a colleague, do you have a good relationship with them? Or would there be somebody else on your team who'd be better placed to have that conversation? Is the incident likely to be something that triggers your own stress or distress response? For example, has the incident involved children of a similar age as your own? Does it involve elderly parents experiencing something similar to your own parents? Also consider the wider network of the individual when you're thinking about their immediate needs. For example, if they're injured and need medical attention, do they have children that need to be picked up from school and fed? Are they worrying about them rather than focusing on what they need? Do they have a pet, a dog that needs letting out at home? And if they're not injured, is your colleague coming off shift immediately or do they still have a number of hours to work? Would it be better if they went home or would it be better if they stayed at work where they can be supported by colleagues? And if they went home, will they have somebody at home to provide comfort and support? And how are they getting home? Are they safe to drive or to get public transport? Do they need a lift or a taxi home? So thinking about protection from further threat or distress. Exposure needs to be minimised and they need to be help, helped to feel safe. So it's about ensuring their immediate safety. Can they be taken away from the immediate situation and minimise exposure beyond what is required to fulfil their role? Do they need to document the incident as part of their role? If so, does it need to happen straight away? And asking them what will help them to feel safe. And then thinking about what we can do to incre increase their sense of safety. Is that about helping them, helping them to be away from the situation or be in a particular place that helps them to feel safer? And thinking about their own emotional safety. Do they, do they, need, do they need help with managing that distress? So moving on to the comfort and console. Often this is an area that people struggle with because they are fearful of having conversations about distressing events as they are worried about how to comfort people and worried that they will say the wrong thing. And sometimes it can be difficult having these conversations with colleagues, particularly if we're in an environment where, where people have their professional mask on. So think a bit about your body language when you're with somebody. Think about sitting with someone rather than standing above them, looking down at them. Sit, sit so that you can be eye to eye and you can make good eye contact. Think of your tone of voice, how your face is looking, having open body language. Use active listening. So listening and summarising what they're saying and reflecting back to them and maybe paraphrasing what they're saying. And it might be helpful to think about having some set phrases you could be using. For example, it sounds like it was extremely difficult or distressing for you or it's OK to be feeling this way. And allow for silence. Silence is OK. You may feel uncomfortable with it, but the 
person may need the silence to gather their thoughts or compose themselves. And try not to bring it back to you and how you're feeling. Try to reduce the distractions around you and don't rush them or force them to talk. Just let them bring whatever they want to. And it's OK not to have all the answers. But also think a bit about what might be an unhelpful response. And these might include things like, you could have died. I don't know how you survived that. It's not helpful reminding someone of their own mortality. And often that is something that will stick out for people. So moving on to the support for practical tasks. You are likely to have picked up an idea of what support they need with practical tasks when when you were at when you were just you were looking at their um, immediate needs. So it might be they need a taxi home. OK, and think about organizational processes that need to be followed. Do they need support with that? Is there form filling that needs to be done? Do they need you to sit with them while they do this? Do they have questions about how to fill that form in? They're often not that straightforward. Does that form need to be filled in straight away or could it be left until they're on shift next? And if they've decided that they feel OK to stay at work, are there lighter duties that they can be given? Or is there somebody that could support them with some tasks? And thinking a bit about those practical tasks, thinking about their wider network, is there somebody at home that needs to know what has happened? Do they need you to ring their partner if they're too distressed to? Does their kid's school need to know what has happened and that mum or dad might not be there to pick them up and somebody else will be. OK. And then providing information on coping. The information you provide is likely to differ depending on the situation. If it's a colleague, you may feel that it's appropriate to share with them the strategies that you find helpful. Coping strategies may include reminding them of physical exercise that they do, thinking about having a healthy diet, breathing exercises, getting control of that distress and focusing on their breathing to try and calm themselves down and to feel more in control of their physical responses. Coping strategies also include talking about it. They may not feel like talking about it now with you, but encouraging them to talk about it when they get home with other people. Talking about sleep and the importance of getting a good sleep and kind of sticking to their sleep routine. And remember, often people will say they're fine when they're not. So it's important to reiterate the importance of looking after self and reminding them how can we look after others well if we're not in a good place. And it might be that you need to signpost to useful resources. So the, the, the National Wellbeing Hub, we've got lots of good resources on there. There are apps that people can be using, there's top tips, there are posts, there are videos. And it's probably worth talking about the concept of self-compassion. People often engage in high levels of self-criticism, guilt or shame after an incident. We often hear that people felt that they did not do enough at the time or are not coping in the aftermath. Encouraging people to be self-compassionate compassion, is important. Remind them that given the circumstances, they, de they did the best that they could. Self-criticism is not going to change anything and will just add to their distress. And again, talk about unhelpful coping strategies. People often use strategies in the short term that provide relief, 
but in the longer term can cause more difficulties. These can include overuse of alcohol or drugs, avoidance of similar situations, or avoidance of talking about what has happened. Talk to the person about these unhelpful strategies and remind them that in the, in the long term, it can lead to more difficulties. I mentioned earlier that PFA is not a linear process and you're likely to need to check in with the individual several times. Maybe several times on the day, the day after, the week after, and depending on the severity of the incident, a couple of weeks later. So revisiting coping strategies will be important. So some tips for discussing coping strategies might be things like, it sounds like you've been really struggling with what has happened. What are you doing in and out of work to cope? Is there anything that we can do at work to help you with the difficulties? Or it sounds like you haven't been for a run for a while. What would you need to change to be able to do this? Or having a conversation with them about the strategies that they're using and that they might not be working. And asking them, what other things have you done before at times of high, high stress? What helps you to relax? And again, point them in the direction of the hub for ideas. So connecting with social support. It's important to help them to identify who there is that they can be talking to. Who's around? Is there a colleague they can talk to? Can they talk to family or friends? Can we help family and friends to understand what's going on? If there's no one available at home, then make a plan on how they can be supported. It might be that your team needs a WhatsApp group, or it might be about thinking of having a buddy system, buddying up your colleague with somebody else who may be able to provide them with the support. And then educating about normal responses. This section is really important. Different kinds of crises affect people in different ways, and most of us will respond with resilience. However, there's a wide range of responses that people can have. The emotional, that upset, angry or worried response. The physical responses, so feel intense, shaky, nauseous, having poor sleep. Psychological responses, so lots of questions. Why did it happen? Could I have done things differently? Why did that person do that? Why has it happened to me? Ruminations, intrusions. So again, it might be intrusive thoughts during the day or intrusive images and dreams, dreams about the event. And then there are behavioral responses. So avoiding, and that might be avoiding the place where it happened, it might include avoiding talking about it, it might include avoiding thinking about it, and checking behaviour. So checking that things are as they should be, and checking that everything is okay to help increase that sense of safety. And most of these responses will resolve with time and support. So it's really important that when we educate about normal responses, that we stress that a range of responses will occur and that we don't pathologize what is a normal response. These are normal reactions which we would expect in the immediate aftermath. People often worry about how they responded at the time. They often worry that maybe they froze or maybe they went into fight mode and became angry or maybe the only way they could cope with the situation was to, to leave, was to go into flight mode. People also worry about how they are responding after the event. We would expect somebody to be jumpy 
experiencing sleep difficulties, both dropping off or having bad dreams, Pl playing over the incident in their mind, asking questions, trying to make sense of the event, all of these responses we would expect within the first few weeks afterwards, and those are normal responses. And it's at this point, helping people to understand that what they're experiencing is a common response will help them to be more compassionate with themselves. And again, direct them to self-care resources. This will help to empower them and gain a sense of control over what they're experiencing. And we know people do better if they are helped to empower themselves. There is a need for concern if these trauma or stress responses last longer than four weeks, then it would be appropriate to consider more support. If they, So if they haven't used self-care resources so far, point them in the direction of the National Wellbeing Hub. There are both apps, so Sleepio to help with sleep, Daylight for anxiety, and Silver Cloud to help with low mood. And there are posts on the website that will help people to, em to empower themselves, to, to care for themselves, and, and videos of people with lived experience, which will help to normalise the responses that people are experiencing. And also on, on the website, there's information about how to access more formal support, both nationally and locally, if it's needed. So educating about normal responses helps us to understand our reactions, which helps to empower us and it gives us choices and it helps to reduce our shame and self-blame. If we don't understand what's happening, we may feel that we're losing control or going crazy. We're not. It's a normal response. In a study of 50 experts in 2011, the most commonly endorsed treatment following an incident is education about trauma. So remember, PFA is not a linear model and you may not need all the components. What I would suggest is that the care component is revisited. Keep checking in with your colleague if they have experienced a stressful event. Don't let it be a one-off check-in straight after the incident. Check in the next day, the week after, and a couple of weeks after. Keep checking in until, you're a sat until you are satisfied that the person is doing okay. And it might be helpful for you to have a conversation with them about their coping strat strategies. So now we're going to move on to the scenarios and many of these scenarios. So I've tried to develop scenarios that could be applied in both health and social care settings. OK, so in this first scenario, a young, a young inexperienced carer, Sandy, who's new to your team, has found a service user dead in the bathroom. The death is unexpected and Sandy had only seen the service user earlier in the day. Sandy had never seen a dead person before. She is partway through her shift and still has a couple of hours until she is due to go home. So although this scenario is based in a care home, it could be on a hospital ward. It, so it's, it, it's about being in both health and social care set, settings. And it could be um, So we would apply PFA in a similar way. OK, so thinking about this scenario, how would you be using PFA? So check caring for Sandy's immediate needs. You check in with her, have a chat with her about how she's feeling and about how she feels about continuing to work. Does she need to go home? Will there be somebody at home that she can talk to or would she be better staying staying at work doing low demand tasks but with other staff present for support and at the end of the shift how is she getting home is she okay to drive or get public transport does she need a lift or a taxi 
So protect him from further threat or distress. It would be about ensuring that Sandy is not involved in the practical tasks following the death. For example, calling a doctor or letting relatives know. Providing comfort and consolation. So giving Sandy an opportunity to discuss what has happened without pressure. For example, would you like to tell me what has happened? Or does that feel too difficult? I'm here if you want to talk. Providing practical help and support. If she's very distressed, would it be helpful for you to ring the person she lives with to let them know that she's had a difficult situation at work? And while she's at work, does she need help with writing up the incident? Can you sit with her while she does it? Can it be delayed until the next shift? And providing information on coping. Ask her what she's going to do when she gets home. What helps her to feel OK when she's had a difficult day? Share with her what you do when you've had a difficult day. Maybe direct her to the resources on the hub. Connect her with social support. Is there somebody that she feels comfortable on the team with that she can talk to? Does your team have a WhatsApp group so that she can get support from other members of the team? Has she got friends who work in similar environments that she can chat to? And educate about normal responses. Give her reassurance about what she is feeling and that it is OK to feel that way. Explain to her that we all respond in different ways and that there isn't a right way of responding. So moving on to scenario two. And again, this scenario could happen in any setting. So Beth, the receptionist for your team is assaulted at work. A client or a patient or a service user has not responded well to procedures and has become increasingly aggressive towards Beth. As the person gets more wound up, he slaps Beth across the face and spits at her as he leaves the building. So how would you use PFA in this scenario? What would your immediate response be? You'd be caring for Beth's immediate needs. You'd be checking that Beth is OK and hasn't sustained a serious injury. You'd be helping Beth clean up if she needs to. If she's got spit on her, you'd be helping her with that. You'd withdraw her from the public view. You'd take her into another room, sit her down. If she's experiencing a high level of distress, you'd be getting her to focus on slowing her breathing down and getting her breathing into a steady rhythm, enabling her to get control of her physical responses. You might be offering her a cup of tea and checking in with her to see how she's feeling and to see what she needs immediately. It might be that you just need to sit with her for a while. You'd be checking in, does she need to go home? Would she rather stay at work? In terms of protecting her from further threat or distress, you'd be ensuring that the assailant has left the building and calling the police. And if Beth is staying at work, you'd be ensuring she's not manning reception and maybe finding somebody else to do that task for the rest of today. And then thinking about what is gonna help Beth return to sitting at reception when she's next in? Are there practical or physical issues that need to be addressed with the reception and its location? And in terms of comfort and consolation, you'd be giving Beth an opportunity to talk about what has happened without pressure. Would you like to tell me what happened? Or does that feel too difficult? I'm here if you wanted to talk. You'd be giving her reassurance. And then thinking about the practical help and support again, this is linking. This is linking to the earlier modules. What is Beth going to need right now, but also when she returns to reception? 
And are there reception tasks that could be given to somebody else for the rest of the day or tomorrow? And if she needs to go home, is she OK to do this journey on her own? Does she need a lift? Is there somebody that you could ring to pick her up? And again, providing information on coping. So talking about how to manage our physical responses. And that might be about talking through a breathing exercise, helping her to calm herself down, asking her what she's going to do when she gets home. What helps her to feel OK when she's had a difficult day? What does she do to wind down? And again, maybe directing her to the hub for more information. And thinking a bit about the social support. What support can she have from the team? What support is there at home? Are there people that she can be talking to about what has happened? Especially if she's part time or it's going to be the weekend or she's got annual leave. And again, educate about normal responses. Give her reassurance about what she's feeling and that it's OK to feel that way. And again, explain to her that we all respond in different ways. And when she's next in, going back to that, caring for her immediate needs, asking her what she needs to be OK at work. So in the last scenario, A and E staff are giving news to parents regarding the death of their teenage daughter following accidental drugs overdose. Parents respond with understandable high levels of distress. So this scenario is thinking about how, how we deliver PFA to either patients or their family members. And again, this scenario, it, it could occur in a, in a lot of circumstances, delivering bad news, which can lead to a, an intense response from somebody. So how would you use PFA with the parents? So caring for their immediate needs, you know, withdrawing them from public view. Is there a side room or a quiet room that you can talk to them in? Ask them what they need. Do they need you to contact anyone? Have they come in on their own? Do they have a partner or other family members that need to be informed? Have they left other children at home that a friend or a neighbour could look after? Or is it that they just need you to sit with them quietly? while they begin to make sense of what you've said. And for you to be available to answer some of their questions. And remember that maybe not all of these components are needed. So it might not be about protecting from further threat or distress. Or it might not be possible to do that if they have to have a conversation with the police. It's about Comfort and consolation. So offer your consolation. I'm really sorry. This must be very difficult for you. The reality is that there is nothing that you can say that is going to ease their pain at that moment. But being there with them and offering your consolation is something that they will remember later on. And they will remember that member of staff who sat with them and offered them that compassion and that comfort. So thinking about practical help and support. Again, is there anything that you can help them with? Bringing a relative, providing them somewhere quiet to sit, finding them a cup of tea, providing them information on what to do following a death. Providing information on coping, you know, discuss with them the importance of maintaining their self care routine, that it's really important for them to look after themselves at this point, that they need to try and eat healthily, they need to try and get enough sleep, all of those things which will feel really, really difficult for them. 
but is important for them to be maintaining. And connecting with social support, think about who they've got that they can, who can support them. Have they got close family or friends that can be with them? And educate about normal response. There is no normal way of grieving. They will feel a range of different emotions at different points. And that's okay, that's normal. And maybe it's about providing them with information about useful resources, maybe directing them to NHS Inform and their section on grief and bereavement. And if you work in an environment where you are likely to be given bad news, it is worth thinking of some stock phrases that you can use to offer comfort and consolation that will help you to feel better prepared. It may be worth asking colleagues who've more experience if they have particular phrases that they use. So in summary, protect, address the individual's immediate safety and practical needs. And if it's a colleague, check in with them. Acknowledge that it was a difficult situation. You know, give them that space to exhale, to just physically and emotionally stabilise. And make sure debriefs are positive. So thinking about that hot and cold debriefs, particularly the hot debrief, not asking, why did you do that? But giving them the opportunity to, to talk about what has happened. Share tips for helpful coping. Educate about common responses. Connect with social support. And provide information about additional support that's available. And say to them that you're going to check in again. And make sure that you do. And don't forget that there are resources out there. If you feel that you don't have the knowledge, there's lots of information that has good, um, has good knowledge that you could be visiting. The, the Wellbeing Hub has a whole range of topics that are written posts, but there are videos and there, there are apps. So there's, there's a lot out there. So, that's, that's the end of the, um, the slideshow. Thank you so much, Ms. Sarah Phillips, for the great session in psychological first aid. And of course, uh, we would like to present to you our certificate of appreciation. Let me read the content. International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated, in collaboration with Physical Education Foundation of India, Swarnim Gujarat Sports University, and Batanga State University, JPLPC Malvar College of Teacher Education. Presents this certificate of appreciation to, for her commendable service rendered as resource speaker that led to the success of the event, International Conference on Sports Psychology, organized by the International Association of Physical Education Sports, IAPS, incorporated in collaboration with Physical Education Foundation of India, Swarnim Gujarat Sports University, and Batanga State University, JPLPC, Malvar College of Teacher Education, given the 17th day of April 2022 via Zoom platform. Signed by the Vice President of the International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated, Dr. TJD Panganiban. Signed by the President, International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated, Dr. Jesus D. Argari. Signed by the Chairman of the International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated, Dr. Jewelson M. Santos. And of course, the National Secretary, Physical Education Foundation of India, 
Dr. Piyush Hain, and the Vice Chancellor of Swarnim Gujarat Sports University, Professor Dr. Arjun Singh Rana. Ladies and gentlemen, this certificate of appreciation is awarded to Ms. Sarah Phillips. Thank you so much again, Ms. Sarah Phillips, for giving us a very significant session on psychological first aid. And now I'll be sharing the virtual floor to the chairman of the International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated, Dr. Jewel San M. Santos, for a video sharing of the next webinar of the IAPS. Join us in the international webinar on sports pedagogy education through sports organized by IAFES incorporated in collaboration with Alexandria University and Kafril Sheikh University. Join us in the international webinar on sports pedagogy education through sports organized by IAFES incorporated in collaboration with Alexandria University and Kafril Sheikh University. Join us in the international webinar on sports pedagogy education through sports organized by IAFES incorporated in collaboration with Alexandria University and Kafril Sheikh University. All right, there we have it, the international webinar on sports pedagogy happening on April 24. All right, and now to give us a concluding speech, is the chief advisor of the International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated, Associate Professor Dr. Kishore Mukhopadhyay. Sir? Once again, you just have attended the International oh. Conference on Sports Psychology. And here we have the Associate Professor, Dr. Kishore Mukhopadhyay, for the concluding speech. Go ahead, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Today we are in the International Conference on Sports Psychology, organized by International Association of Education and Sports Incorporated, Digital Education Foundation of India, in collaboration with Sarnim Gujarat Sports University, Batanga State University. Actually, sports psychology deals with the study of man and behavior of sporting person before, during, and after competition and during the preparation of an athlete. So today, our keynote speaker was Professor Dr. Lim Boon Hui of Malaysia. And his topic was regarding sports massage and positive psychophysiological responses. In earlier times, sports massage is used for re rehabilitation and relaxation purpose. Nowadays, massage is the man mechanical manipulation and rhythmical pressure for prompting health and optimizing health and well-being. For preparation between competitions, recovery and treatment purpose, this massage is widely used worldwide. The effect of massage are a four folded that is biomechanical, physiological, neurological, and psychological. It is helpful for overcoming or increasing endorphin, which is considered as a natural painkiller. And parasympathetic nerve activation, and also slow down the level of cortisol, which you can consider as a stress hormone. Touch massage 
decrease the negative emotions helpful for management of anxiety and promoting relaxation positive psychological effects on moods and it is useful for faster recovery after any vigorous activities as well so thanks a lot for your valuable and insightful deliberation our first resource speaker was dr subir devnath and his topic was planning mental conditioning for elite athlete he discussed clearly about the theoretical as well as practical aspects of process of mental conditioning with practical demonstrations he discussed the various aspects of performance profile in the light of sports psychology such as self talk concentration stress management courage leadership confidence mental preparation and so on mental factors such as self confidence degree of challenges anxiety nervousness whether spectatorship spectators media family team spirit attitude and motivation are of greater importance psychological skills training requires physical and mental skill practice skill improvement as well as motivation psychological skill testing is depend on the mental toughness five basic mental skills which is an individualized matter that is depending upon the needs of the sports person and it is also related with the event of sporting situation so thank you sir for your informative talk about the mental toughness and conditioning our second resource speaker was dr a uh, professor dr lolit sharma sir and his topic was psychological periodization psychological intervention is an integral part of athletes regime along with the different support system psychological periodization is a balance psychological load with physical training load in each training phase of is each training phase to enhance the benefit of the psychological support services and it is an individualized matter depending upon the nature of sporting activity the psychological periodization changes collect the knowledge of the athletes psychic state discuss the training plan emphasis on the assessment and conduct the necessary test is a key component in the preparing the preparatory phase of the psychological periodization preparatory and training plan should be vary depending upon the lacuna of the psychic state of an athlete that is motivational aspect goal setting mental physical recovery is a key part in the preparatory period he discuss two different emotional and natural barriers the specific preparation is sport specific in nature in the competitive phase try to transfer and apply the psychological skill to the field and competition that means in the preparatory part one has to gather the knowledge about the psychological aspect and which aspect we have to train and the second part in the competitive part it is the very important part where we have to transfer the and apply the psychological skill for that athlete during this phase the confidence level of that athlete must be optimal and it is the transitional phase is useful for apply psychological techniques for recovery and rest between sessions he discuss the psychological periodization models of judge and gilbert and periodize mental training cycle thanks sir for your insightful and valuable deliberation towards the areas of psychological periodization which is rather a new concept our third resource speaker was 
Miss Sarah Phillips and her topic was psychological first aid. PFA or psychological first aid is a recognized model to provide a support and practical assistance for people with stress. There are seven key components as per Dr. Uh, as per Mr. Uh, Ms. Phillips, and these are care, protect, comfort, support, provide information, connect with social support, educate about normal responses. There are several factors. These are age, level of support, ability to share the different emotional aspects, severity of events, physical and mental health, resilience, ability to cope up the stress, by which a proper psychological first aid model should be applied for that particular person. And it is, again, an individualized matter. There are certain steps first to give proper emphasis on the care, then protect, protection, about the threats and distresses, comfort and console with the listening and summarizing of that particular present experience, then support practical task, provide information on coping. Psychological first aid is not a linear process and it is not fixed for everybody. Depending upon the severity of the stress, the psychological first aid may be changed in connection with social support. So this, in my point of view, in case of sports, there are two sides of a coin, that is success and failure. In case of sporting arena, failure and success is a part of sporting life. In case of success, the emotional expression of an athlete is high and super normal, which is required to normalize with the help of proper psychological knowledge. And in case of failure, the mental and emotional state of an athlete is disturbed and needs severe attention to minimize the temporary discomfort through proper psychological first aid program. Anybody can be a psycho, uh, psychological first aider. It, he or she may be parents, coaches, teachers, fellow teammates. The only thing is required is that you have a proper knowledge of your athlete, as well as you have a experience to apply the psychological skill to that knowledge with effective communication. This is a very important area in sports and games. It is also related with injury part, injury point of view also. So anybody can be a psychological first aider. They need not require any kind of special degree. Only thing is required the knowledge and experience and how to tackle the situation within a shortest span of time. So hope you have learned a lot and enjoyed this session very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Associate Professor Dr. Kishwar Mukhapadai for such a wonderful concluding speech. Thank you for giving us a wrap of what has transpired on the four sessions happened today. And now to give us the vote of thanks, may I welcome the Vice President of the International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated, Dr. DJ D. Panganiban. Hi, Doc Len. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Buddha. Okay, so good day to our respected guests and participants. So it's an honor for me to have the opportunity to give a vote of thanks on this International Conference on Sports Psychology. So I, on behalf of International Association on Physical Education and Sports Incorporated, extends a warm vote of thanks 
to all delegates of this conference for their presence and contribution to make this event successful. I extend my thanks to our distinguished uh, resource speakers, Associate Professor Dr. Lim Boon Hui, Dr. Subir Debnat, Professor Dr. Lalit Sharma, and Ms. Sarah Phillips. Thank you, ma'am and sirs, for uh, taking out of taking out time from your busy schedule to grace the event. Thank you for enlightening us, for for inspiring, and for encouraging us with your words on this special day. Today's webinar was full of knowledge and interesting things. A special thanks to our uh, university president, Dr. Pierce Ayron Quillo, Dr. Jesus Argarin, Dr. Philip Y. Del Rosario, Dr. Piyush Jain, Professor Dr. Arjun Rana, Professor Dr. Frank Jing Horn Lu, Dr. Nora B. Marasigan, Dr. Gina Togade Astillero, Associate Professor Shori Mokopajay, Associate Professor Rosanna Lat, Dr. Sharon Angulo, Mrs. Arby Duenas, and of course, Dr. Uh, Glenn P. Cortensano for providing the support to make this conference successful. I must, not, I must not forget to thank the organizing team of the Physical Education Foundation of India, Shwarnim Gwajarat Sports University, Basse to JPLP Simalbar College of Teacher Education, uh, Teacher Education Educa uh, Teacher Education Student Council, Human Kinetic Society, and uh, the IAPS family for working hard to make this session successful. And of course, thank you to Dr. Jiwenson to for the opportunities. Finally, our heartfelt thanks to our participants for your active participation. And lastly, uh, thank you to our Almighty Lord for uh, making this possible despite the challenges uh, brought by pandemic. Once again, uh, thank you everyone for making this a uh, great success. Hope to see you again in our future events. God bless us. Dr. Glenn? Yes, thank you so much po, Dr. TJD Panganiban, the Vice President of the International Association of Physical Education, Sports Incorporated. And again, ladies and gentlemen, this International Conference on Sports Psychology is brought to you by the International Association of Physical Education Sports Incorporated in collaboration with Physical Education Foundation of India. So our Niam Gujarat Sports University in Batanga State University, JPLTC, Malvar College of Teacher Education. And I believe that the feedback link is already available here in our Zoom chat box. All right. And everyone, may I request you to kindly turn on your camera for the photo opportunity. Again, while you are, you know, getting on of your camera, I would like to, to read some comments here. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the organizing committee of IAPSI for letting me participate in such an eye-opening webinar with the main theme of psychological predization. My sincerest regards to the eminent resource person for your valuable lectures. Okay, I know that the technical team is ready to do the screenshots. Right, we have seven frames here. Again, that uh, the evaluation link is already available in our 